Chapter 191, Ranker, 2, perfectly cooked rice with corn sprinkled on top like snowflakes, a fried rice made of only rice and corn, cooked over a frying pan with corn oil on the outside, it didn't look delicious at all, that's what Rachel thought, too, so she plunged her spoon into the rice roughly, and brought it to her mouth, nom, nom, she tended to chew food slowly if she expected it to taste bad, the movement of her chin was cautious, question mark, however, Rachel's eyes widened not long after, as time passed, her chewing became faster as well, is it good, Jin Seon grinned at her, Rachel nodded without a word, nom, 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 the precocious princess turned into a hungry hamster, the dish felt and tasted like pork rather than corn, this flavor, Kim Young Jin and the others reacted in the same way, although this restaurant had opened four days ago, they hadn't visited it until now due to suspicion, but now they could finally understand why the community was filled with such excellent reviews, does it taste bad, Nayeon, except for one person, Jin Seon looked at Che Nayeon, she was chewing mechanically as if she was eating rubber, huh, no, it's good, startled, Che Nayeon put more food into her mouth and chewed faster, nom, 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 she feared her reaction would hinder others from enjoying their meal, both of her cheeks were now full with fried rice, but she didn't seem to enjoy it at all, so, he took away all the special reward items, at that moment, Aileen, who had already finished eating, asked, essence of the straits Kim Young Jin shook his head with a grim expression, number, there are five special rewards and a team could receive up to three, the individual player took the maximum number, ah really, he must be really lucky, I'm envious, the lottery process was simple, a total of 100 tickets were placed in a virtual container, the number of tickets that belonged to a party varied depending on the party's contribution, for example, essence of the straight, which made 33% contribution, received 33 tickets, naturally, the unknown individual received 17, right, but why did he help you, or wait, can we really call that helping, excuse me, waiter, Aileen stopped and grabbed the arm of a waiter passing by, yes, give me one more plate of this, sure, she turned again towards Kim Young Jin after placing her order, Kim Young Jin sighed, actually, we recorded the footage of the castle attack, eh, you got a video, yes, I ordered a subordinate to record a video to help prepare for the next castle attack, without this mysterious player's help, the siege would have been very difficult, and we may have even failed, oh, let me see, show me the video, their conversation captured the attention of many around them, all the nearby players, not just Aileen, showed interest, here, you can see that something came flying from the sky and killed 10 magicians, Kim Young Jin projected a hologram of the video in the air, only those who were friends with Kim Young Jin could see the hologram, attack the magicians first, that's too difficult, there are too many guards surrounding them, the video started from the beginning, and Rachel and Che Na Yun strained their eyes trying to concentrate, what are you guys doing, at that moment, Kim Soho suddenly appeared out of nowhere, oh jeez, you surprised me, when did you get here, me, just now, I'm here to eat, Che Na Yun was startled but soon pointed to the seat next to her, you too, sit down and watch this, Che Na Yun pointed to the hologram, what's this, a ranker, ranker, Kim Soho, who was already friends with Kim Young Jin, quickly fixed his attention on the video, the flow of the video was straightforward, five black streaks flew through the sky, for now, no one could tell whether they were arrows, spears, or some sort of magic spells, the attack, surrounded by fierce winds, clearly headed towards the throats of five magicians, the magicians detected the murderous intent and casted defense magic, but the black streaks broke through the barriers with ease and pierced the magicians to death, it was then the observers could finally tell that the attacks were from arrows, oh, eh, what happened next was even more surprising, the arrows which pierced the magicians suddenly changed course, they shot up and killed another five magicians, as a result, a total of ten magicians died, each magician gave 1.7% contribution, 
so 10 times that was 17%. They could see where the individual player's contribution came from, ha ha. Now, isn't that a mysterious and wonderful archery skill? Jin Seon smiled. Even his arrows are black. He obviously designed them like that on purpose. How childish. Aileen, on the other hand, hid her astonishment and faked indifference. More than that, what are you going to do with the other castles? Aelin asked Kim Young-jin. Although it was proven that there is a way to reach the sixth floor without destroying all the castles, we decided to focus on conquering the fifth floor for now. Hello, everyone. We are the Ordinary People Alliance. Suddenly, a loud voice filled the restaurant. Please contact us if you are an ordinary person and still not a member. They were members of the Ordinary People Alliance who had been crowding the streets recently. The group's leader and followers stormed in and sat down around a big table. Hey, Divine Archer, what do you think of them? Aileen asked, glancing at the loud bunch. Well, they need a way out, too. I think they're all right for now. Jin Seon gave a neutral answer. Hey, what are you doing? Suddenly, a hoarse voice called them. Because the voice stood out so much, it caught everyone's attention. Ah, are you an ordinary person, huh? Uh, well, I guess I am. A bald man with scars under his eyes that made him look like a criminal. It was Cater. Highest difficulty tutorial town. Meanwhile, two weeks had passed since the start of the third tutorial. Jin Seyuk started from scratch after dying and was now back inside tutorial town. She recognized some familiar faces, an NPC she had fought to death last time, an NPC she caught trying to pickpocket her, etc. However, Jin Seyuk walked right past them with a smile. It was her second time going through the tutorial, and she was already used to everything. She took a look at the 1000 TP she had on her. It was a reward she got from coming first in the second tutorial. Now, she somehow had to increase her wealth and acquire better weapons and armors before climbing to the second floor. Surely he was waiting for her there. She first headed towards the mercenary pub. While walking, she opened the community. The community and the public forum were available for viewing from the tutorial town. Of course, some information was hidden if the poster put a check mark next to the disable read for players below underscore th floor option. She came across an interesting post while browsing through the forum underscore. List of rankers for beginners provided by the information team small business enterprise. Hello. We are the information team Small Business Enterprise. We are part of the Hero Association's Department of Statistics. We entered the tower to carry out our duty to examine and evaluate players inside the Tower of Wish. Of course, the Tower of Wish has no official ranking system. However, we were able to learn about the greatness of high players from the information we gathered directly inside the tower. We have selected the top 100 rankers based on a certain set of criteria in order to encourage other players and to set guidelines for newcomers. Omitted. We apologize for the long introduction. Below is the ranker list. Some players may have been omitted if their information has not been made public. 1. Black Lotus. A mysterious player thought to have been the first player to reach the fifth and sixth floor. His nickname, real name, and everything else are unknown. The only thing certain about him is that he is a male. Although he is officially an archer, he seems capable of utilizing other weapons as well. Omitted. This player, whose speed of growth is on a whole different level is thought to be a hermit master, known only in legends and novels. There is no doubt that he is powerful, for even vast expanse Nim, who has been assessing the situation from the outside world, has called him very interesting. 2. Aileen. We'll leave out the details. She is no different from the Aileen we know on Earth. Daunting magic power, overwhelming spirit speech. She is humanity's great hero. 3. Yi Yong, a, a hero from the Temple of Justice. Although he pales in comparison to his partner, Aileen, the Hellfire magician has a gift specialized for hunting and is practically rolling in TP as a result. No monster should be able to withstand his Hellfire. 4. Kim Jun Woo, a vast expanse hunter. He only plays solo. Not much is known all about him since he takes care of everything alone. 5. Underscore. Jin Sehyuk walked while looking over the list of rankers, the so-called big shots of the tower. Before, she would have stopped after reading a few lines, but now reading had become somewhat of a hobby to her. Level? Question mark. Mercenary pub. While reading, 
She arrived at the mercenary pub. Jin Seyuk turned off the community and stood in front of the owner behind the counter. Oh, what's this? You're down here again? The owner recognized her and frowned, it was quite a rude reaction. She would have started by giving him the middle finger in the past. But Jin Seyuk today simply smiled and answered, if you recognize me, you should know you won't be able to rip me off. 6F, Splendor, Bucephalus, a legendary horse loved by Alexander the Great who ruled Macedonia in the distant past. It was one of the most priceless treasures that existed within the Tower of Wish which contained all of humanity's legends, histories, and myths. I wanted to tame it no matter what. I observed the direction it ran off to with the eyes of the master sharpshooter. My sight stretched faster than my body could move. Soon, I spotted a galloping horse with a rich black mane. Right. It no, she was undoubtedly the legendary Bucephalus. I took out the dwarven supercar in a hurry. Scan. I immediately stepped on the accelerator and chased after Bucephalus. From the sky, Spartan was following me in an all-like flight. After driving for about three minutes, I finally caught a glimpse of Bucephalus. Level 13 Bucephalus. The information shown on the smartwatch reminded me once again that the female horse running in front of me was Bucephalus. For a mere horse to be level 13 meant that she was undoubtedly a legendary creature. She should level up further as time passed is too. I didn't necessarily want to ride her. I could just tame her and set her loose, and she would trample over everything that blocked her way. Should I give her to Evendal as a gift? In any case, I had to catch her first. I should be able to bring her back to the real world once I tame her! Exclamation mark. Black smoke came out of the dwarven supercar which had been running beyond its limit. Suddenly, Bucephalus stopped. I stopped after her. We stared at each other, Bucephalus above the hill and my dwarven supercar on a slope. PRRR. Bucephalus looked down at me and wailed in discontent. PRRR. PRRR. She breathed heavily through her nose in an intimidating manner. Oh, um, I didn't follow you, I just happened to be heading in the same direc. PRRR. Bucephalus in history was famous for her hot temper. Even the brave Alexander the Great had a difficult time taming her. As such, I couldn't do anything rash. It was impossible to tame her in one day. But I really didn't want to let her go either. Suddenly, the famous story of the monkey and the flower shoes came to my mind. The strategy was to offer the flower patterned shoes to the barefoot monkey so that he eventually couldn't live without it. But did I even have something she might want? Maybe I did. Random Dice X3. I held on to three random dice in case I needed them. Even the famous Bucephalus couldn't survive without food. Rather, the smarter an animal, the more likely it placed value on the taste of its meal. Let's lure her with food. DRRR, I rolled the three random dice. Level 4 Salmon Powder for enhancing the taste of food. Level 4 Master Grade Grains. They were excellent items. Um, wait. I excused myself, then poured the grains and the powder on a large plate and threw in an ample amount of raw meat which I had planned on eating myself. I placed the plate on the ground while Bucephalus watched me. This is really good stuff. I used suggestive voice. An animal surely couldn't resist it. PRRR. However, Bucephalus resisted the magic power. What a mighty fellow. Okay, okay, I'll go. Leaving now. I stepped back slowly. I left the plate where it was and got on the dwarven supercar. I decided to retreat for today, but I ordered Spartan to keep an eye on her location. Vroom. I drove slowly and returned to the hot spring. I didn't get a chance to check whether or not she ate the food but I would find out when I went back and retrieved the plate later. Phew. Anyway, let's get some training done for now. I lowered myself into the water and took a deep breath. I let the spirit power circulate through my veins and breathed repeatedly in order to let it reshape my body. According to my will, scattered spirit power gathered around my heart and helped it beat faster. Coop. The thumping was strong enough to hurt my ribs. But this way I could drain the interior of my body, including organs and blood vessels. The inside of the body was as important as the outside. I was engrossed in training for about 30 minutes. Suddenly, a horde of system messages appeared before me. You successfully conquered castle number one. Your contribution rate is 17%. You receive 2550 TP. You receive special rewards. Special skill book. Level 1 Wind of the Spirit. Item. 
Level 4 Purifying Wand Item, Level 4 Special Chemical Activity Beaker Ah, they succeeded. I sat up straight and began to examine the rewards in satisfaction. Wind of the Spirit This is a special skill that enabled the user to vaporize their body for a short amount of time. It was useful for escaping or sneaking up on an enemy but there wasn't much merit to it because it was a special skill. It would have been amazing if it were a normal skill. Next, level 4 purifying wand. This wand helped magicians control their magic power more easily. It refined the impurities in magic power, thus giving it the name, purifying wand. Lastly, level 4 special chemical activity beaker. I needed to investigate further to figure out how I could utilize this one. This obviously looks like it goes hand in hand with the hot spring water here. First, I took out the beaker. For the following week, I continued to travel back and forth on the sixth floor. My routine was the same every day. First, I located where Bucephalus was with Spartan's help and offered her delicious food three times a day. While doing so, I came across other legendary beasts such as the unicorn and the black tortoise. However, I decided to give up on them since they couldn't be tamed in the first place. After feeding Bucephalus, training was up next. I did breathing exercises at the hot spring of peace for more than an hour every day. I improved master sharpshooters grade with Spartan's help and honed my skills through extraction and permanent materialization. For the record, it was possible to extract Stigma's magic power two times per day inside the hot spring. As a result, my stats increased by do -do 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 -do. no less than 2.015 in a mere week. Perhaps because my stats outside the tower were low to begin with, my stats inside the tower would catch up to my stats outside in a short while. That's when the real growth would begin. Once my stats caught up completely, my growth should accelerate greatly. My stats should go up by another 2-3 points. Whether or not that was great was subjective. Q -um. In any case, there was one more piece of good news. I was inside the hot spring of peace. Currently, I was in the middle of ignoring Bucephalus who was circling around me, P-R-R-R, P-R-R-R, her pride didn't allow her to approach me directly, but she was certainly letting me know that she was there, yesterday, I had completely cut off the food that I've been giving her three times a day for the past week, bleep, at that moment, I received a message, boss colon I'm at the place you said, the filthy lake, I informed the members of the chameleon troop of the pathway to the sixth floor, of course, that didn't include Kata. Currently, Kata should be on his way to destruction along with Zeruan. You have to jump into the lake. Are you with anyone? Boss, I'm alone. Kyauk Jun Jiyong, Jin, and Jin Yuan said they had something to take care of. Well, the three of them would certainly try to attack a fortress or a gateway. They were experts when it came to attacking strongholds. Jin would disguise as the enemy commander. Infiltrate the castle and opens the gate from the inside. Kyauk Jun Jiyong and Jin Yuan would then destroy everything within. Boss Colon you want me to jump in this thing? Yeah? Hang in there even if it's dirty. Boss. Okay. I'll head in now. PRRR. At that moment, I heard heavy breathing. I glanced back and saw Bucephalus in my line of sight, obviously angry. It was quite a funny yet cute scene. I held back my laughter and continued to ignore her. Give an animal an inch and she'll take a mile. PRRR, PRRR, PRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
who was grooming her mane from afar. She did seem startled when I got on the dwarven supercar, she must have followed me all the way here, must be a wild animal. I gave a small smile and continued to ignore her. Anyway, let's go to the hot spring. Sure. I don't know where, but, what, hot spring? We're going to a hot spring? Behind me, boss's flustered voice echoed. Chapter 192. Ranker. 3. I was driving the dwarven supercar through the sixth floor splendor. Gentle wind blew past us. Colorful flowers could be seen everywhere, and the eyes of deer twinkled from the mountains afar. The scenery put my mind at ease. In this simple state of happiness, I couldn't help but reminisce. I didn't know why, but the memories from a far past flickered in my head. In my teenage years, I felt invincible with my friends by my side. I studied hard for the college exam. Years passed, and I was in the military long before I had a chance to enjoy my life as an adult. After I was discharged, I started writing. Things went well, I earned some money and finally left home. Back then, I thought I had achieved everything solely on my own. But I was wrong. The support from my parents and relationships I had established with others over 25 years were what made me who I was back then. Well, I spent 25 years there, and 5 years here. How would they have changed in 5 years? Was the world I lived in still the same world I knew? A strange anxiety rose from the depths of the beautiful scenery. Harjin. Suddenly? Boss called my name. Yes, absorbed in thought, I answered her a little late. The weather was especially nice today on the sixth floor. I felt as if I was in the center of a glittering universe. Boss stayed quiet. The silence incited me to turn around, and I saw Boss glaring at me. What? Where did you say we're going? Huh? I said, the hot spring. Ah, I scratched my head. No wonder she misunderstood. My mind was completely occupied with the landscape that I forgot to explain. I don't mean anything strange by it. The hot spring is used for training. There, your stats go up really fast. Keek. Suddenly, Spartan descended and sat on Boss's shoulder. It was quite skillful of him to catch the dwarven supercar at such a high speed. For training? P-R-R-R-R. Spartan looked at Boss with twinkling eyes. He seemed to be having strange thoughts again. Yeah, my stats went up by two in a week. Really? It seemed Boss finally took interest. The way she mumbled hot spring, hot spring, hot spring even made her look excited. Also, that horse is still following us. Hearing her, I smiled wryly. Just like what Boss said. Bucephalus was indeed still following us. She appeared to be speed walking and not quite running, yet her speed was equal to that of the dwarven supercar running at 100 km per hour. She's super fast, right? Boss nodded in silence. Look carefully, and you should be able to obtain some information. Question mark I can't see anything. Just a question mark. Ah. I forgot. The information of a level 13 creature couldn't be viewed on the sixth floor. Players gained increased access to information the higher they climbed, and the highest level that one could access on the sixth floor was level 10. The reason I was able to view Bucephalus information was because of my smartwatch. Have you heard of Bucephalus? Bucephalus? Boss's A's widened a little. It seemed she'd heard the name before. Of course, she appears in the novel I've been reading. I see. Anyway, that's her. How is that possible? Didn't that horse die a long time ago? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's just that anything's possible in the tower. We continued talking and soon enough we arrived at the hot spring. White steam obscured the view of the water sparkling like diamonds surrounded by rocks reminiscent of emeralds. We're here. Oh oh. The scenery was indeed beautiful enough to impress boss. Exclamation mark. Boss, who had been scrutinizing the hot spring, suddenly widened her eyes. She must have received the system notifications regarding the skill increase. Um, Harjin, should I go in, just like this? Huh? Oh um. I looked at boss. She had clothes on, level 4 leather armor and robe both of which I had made for her. It's better to get undressed. Completely. What? Boss frowned at me. Well, we're like a family, so it's enough. I'm joking. Boss, you know how to put up a barrier. I could sense her face turn grim, so I quickly took my words back. She didn't know how to take a joke. Barrier? 
Boss asked back in seriousness. Yes, just get naked inside a barrier. The hot spring will be most effective that way. It'll help you train your magic power. Would you like to give it a go now? Okay. Boss walked into the hot spring fully clothed. I stopped Spartan from trying to go after her. Peek. The bird was about to throw a tantrum when I managed to cover his beak. Boss glanced back at me and Spartan, then formed a black, dome-like barrier around her. The barrier divided the hot spring exactly in half, half for me, and the other half for Boss. Prrra! I let go of Spartan since the barrier was already up. Spartan rushed towards the barrier as soon as I set him free. Hey, you can't go in any ways, swoosh. To my surprise, Spartan penetrated the barrier with ease. What? I tapped on the barrier as a precaution. Tuck, tuck. It was firm enough to make knocking sounds. To enter boss barrier without losing a drop of blood so this must be the power of a divine bird. Feeling somewhat envious of Spartan, I took off my clothes and entered the hot spring. Then I opened my inventory and went over what I had to do. Level 2 Consolidation Coupon. Level 3 Skill Consolidation Coupon. I got these two last week as part of my reward for being the first to enter the sixth floor. Of the two, there, Level 2 Consolidation Coupon, obviously had to be used to upgrade the system. Quack. I ripped the consolidation coupon in half without any hesitation. You used a level 2 consolidation coupon. I'll apply it to the system. Consolidating level 1 extra 7's system. Level 1 extra 7's system became level 2 extra 7's system. I raised my system to level 1 last time. Now it became level 2. Your waiting room increases in size and its efficacy improves. Your inventory level increases from level 1 to level 2. You can now access a wider array of information. Community. I quickly glanced over a myriad of system windows. Now, it was time to use the level 3 skill consolidation coupon. Let's see where my skills stand right now. Basic skill list. 3 thirds. Level 4 Extraction and Permanent Materialization. 2 slots. Skill exp 55%. Level 3 Synthesis. 1 slot. Exp 0. Extraction and Permanent Materialization. Could be upgraded through repetitive training and was at level 4. However, Synthesis was still at level 3 since it could only be upgraded with skill consolidation coupons. As such, it was quite obvious which skill I should use the skill consolidation coupon on. Synthesis increases to level 4. You can now apply the skill in a more diverse way. Just like that, Synthesis was now level 4. The maximum level for a normal skill was 11. I was about halfway there, so now I should be able to do what I've been wanting to do. Now then, let's take the hot spring of peace to my waiting room. I took out the reward I got from the castle attack. There. Level 4 Special Chemical Activity Beaker, underscore. Level 4 Special Chemical Activity Beaker, Level 4 Property Transformation, underscore. As soon as I filled the 1 liter beaker with the water from the hot spring, property transformation activated. The water inside the beaker turned into heavy liquid similar to mercury. Then I used the synthesis skill on the hot spring water. Synthesis also had the power of compression. The semi-solid water became compressed, making extra space in the beaker. From here, I just needed to repeat this process multiple times. I used the beaker and synthesis to gather and compress the water from the hot spring. 1 liter to 2 liters, 2 liters to 4 liters, 4 liters to 8 liters. In the end, I was left with 128 liters worth of spring water compressed inside a 1 liter beaker. All done. I spoke with a wide grin. Now am I just had to bring this over to my waiting room. Then I turn the compressed water into liquid again and release it inside the mini hot spring I prepared. To leave the hot spring as it is seemed like a waste. So this was the solution that I came up with after much deliberation. Of course, the spring water would lose its purifying ability after compression but Stigma's magic power could take care of that. In any case, I was about to return to the waiting room with the beaker. Splash! When the water splashed, I looked up and saw Bucephalus spluttering water with her front legs. Splash splash! Splash splash! The water splashed all over my face. I faked indifference and messaged Boss. Boss, can you help me with my training after you're done? Boss drawing? Yup, training. 
boss okay. But what kind of training are you referring to? Archery practice. And it's training, not training. I'll shoot. So all you have to do is evade. Boss it's a typo. In addition to the hot spring of peace, there were many other training grounds on the sixth floor. For example, the Jewel Forest and the Dark King Mountain Range were nearby. The Jewel Forest was a great place for training skills, and the Dark King Mountain Range was great for training traits. But first, spend three more hours in there. It feels nice, right? Boss yes. It's good. After a short pause. Boss sent one more message along with a screenshot. So she learned how to take a screenshot. Good for her. Boss photo. Boss lol. It was a photo of Spartan splashing water. In it, Spartan was smiling like he was the happiest bird in the whole wide world. For some reason, I felt bitter. Why was I jealous? Coo. Qum. I closed my eyes slowly and was about to share vision with Spartan but held back. I endured the blazing desire. It was all thanks to my endurance stat which amounted to an amazing 7.207. Time flew, and Boss and I spent our time well. Leaving aside other details, Boss restored 3.5 points of magic power. As for me, I raised my trait master sharpshooter to 57% grade 5 and extraction and permanent materialization to level 5. I also succeeded in creating a scaled down version of the hot spring of peace in my waiting room. It wasn't as good as the original, but it was still worth 1-2 hours of my time per day. PRRR, PRRR. Most importantly, after 4 additional days of playing hard to get, I finally tamed Bucephalus. Hi-ing. Level 13 Bucephalus consents to becoming your pet. This relationship can break any time because Bucephalus loyalty is weak. I was satisfied with the temporary master and servant relationship between us. I had enticed her by saying I'd give her good food every day if she became my pet. Boss, can you recommend me a name? And now, Boss only had about an hour left to spend. I asked Boss as I stroked Bucephalus' mane. Can't you just call her Bucephalus' number? That stands out too much. Boss rubbed her chin, deep in thought. Quang Myung, what do you think? Kim Quang Myung in Korean style. Suddenly, my mind went blank. It was such a weird name that I had to doubt my hearing. Do you not like it, huh? Ah, it's... Well, I suppose it's better than Spartan. I thought, it's good. But she's a girl. Ah, that's right, a girl. Then, how about Sanuri? Oh, I like it. Sanuri. It was an unexpectedly pretty name. I asked Bucephalus for her opinion, but she didn't seem to care about her name and simply nibbled the grain I had given to her. All right, let's go with Sanuri. Level 13 Bucephalus nickname has been set to Sanuri. Level 13 Bucephalus secretly likes her new name. For the record, you could park? Tamed animals in the waiting room. I already prepared a stable with an automatic feeding machine in the waiting room as well. Then, I'll see you later, I said to boss. Currently, there was a ticket in her hand. Underscore. 7F ticket. Use this ticket to travel to the starting point of the 7th floor. You cannot return to 6th floor ever again after using this ticket. Underscore. Okay, I'll go on ahead. Despite saying so, she didn't use the ticket. Instead, she placed her hands on the crystal steel nearby and went down to the third floor. She was probably trying to save the first time rewards for me. She was unexpectedly considerate when it came to things like this. I stood there for a while, then turned around. I had about four hours left now. There was nothing left that I needed to do in a hurry. But there was one more person that I had to meet. I wonder what he's doing now? I closed my eyes and shared vision with Spartan. Spartan was flying across the sky on the fifth floor just as I had ordered. He'll be here soon. I confirmed that he had arrived near the forest of fairies, then headed back to the hot spring of peace. I dipped my body in the hot spring that I've grown a little bit tired of and waited for him to arrive. Tick, tick. Thirty minutes. One hour. Two hours went by. I now had about 40 minutes left on my watch. Russell. Suddenly, I felt a presence approaching behind me. I didn't bother getting up. I simply sat with a smile on my face and waited for the presence to unveil. The rustling sound grew louder, and the sound of footsteps grew more vivid. My heart beat a little faster as the distance between us shortened. After five minutes that felt like 30 minutes, 
His scent finally touched my nose. Oh, a confused voice rang out behind my back. However, I didn't turn around. I leaned against the rocks surrounding the hot spring and simply grinned. I didn't have to check to know who this person was. You're here. I stared at the surface of the water, which acted like a mirror and reflected his face. A well-tended undercut and a flawless appearance. Kim Soho looked at me with a puzzled expression on his face. Long time no see. It was a reunion after three years. I was glad but also a little bit nervous. I was to face him not as Black Lotus but as Fenra, as Kim Hajin. Around the same time, fifth floor, materialized demon realm. A party made up of Aileen, Yi yong Jin Se-yeon, and Shin jong ek was exploring deeper into the demon realm. The executives of the demon race aren't anything to worry about. Shin jong ek smiled as he thought about the demon whom he had pierced to death a moment ago. Ha ha, right, you were outstanding. You have the potential to become a spear god in the future. I don't know about that. Jin Se-yeon played along with him, but Alien seemed rather uninterested. In truth, Jin Se-yeon's original plan was to travel alone. However, when Shin jong ek asked her to join them, she had no choice but to accept. After all, she owed a great debt to his grandfather, Shin my uncle, though it happened more than twenty years ago. Shall we set out again? Yeah, whatever. Let's go. Aelin answered Shin jong ek evidently annoyed. As a member of this amazing party, Shin jong ek had nothing to fear for. He walked with confidence. The monsters that appeared from time to time were indeed no match for them. For one, most enemies were killed by Jin Seiyon's arrows before reaching them. Even if they managed to come close, Aelin's spirit speech and Yi Yong's hellfire, and, although not on an equal level, Shin Jong X's spear easily destroyed them all. Then, let's walk a little bit faster. Shin Jong X led the way. He felt a little strange at the fact that he was not the leader in a group but he was satisfied enough to be just a member. It felt as if he had become a hero of an equal degree. They continued on for about ten minutes. Ah, there's the crystal steel. Suddenly, Jin Seiyon pointed to a distance. Where? Where? Aileen widened her eyes and looked in the direction indicated. It's about three kilometers away, so you might not be able to see it. Miss Aileen, you're joking. Ha ha. Jin Seiyon smiled and observed the scene. There were three robed people standing next to the crystal steelies. One of them was very tall, probably over two meters in stature, and had a sturdy build. Another one was slim and held a spear in his hand. The last seemed like a woman as she was wearing heels. Jin Seiyon couldn't figure out who they were. They seemed familiar enough, but she couldn't identify them clearly. Suddenly, the largest one turned his head and looked in her direction. Who is it? What is it? What or who are you looking at? Aelin asked in a hurry. Jin Seiyon whispered without averting her eyes. They certainly don't look friendly. We might have to confront them to use the crystal steel. Yeah? Then let's confront them. As expected, Aelin continued forward without a hint of hesitation. Yes. Let's go. Yi yong Shin jong -ek, and Jin Seiyon followed her. Chapter 193 Hierarchy 1. A lonely castle stood on a cliff somewhere near the Mediterranean Sea. It stood there for a hundred years without belonging to anybody before a man of wealth purchased it as his vacation home a year ago. Its appearance preserved the style of the Middle Ages, but in contrast to the fancy exterior, it was completely empty inside. In a room without a single piece of furniture, a conference was currently taking place. There was some resistance. But we achieved our goal. The secretary in a neat suit bowed. That's good. A low, solid voice filled the room in return. You did well. Thank you, chairman. In the deepest part of the old castle was a single throne. There sat an elderly man. His name was Duke Chul, also known as Chindo, the owner of Daehyun which wielded great influence in all of South Korea, and the head of the Che family, considered to be one of most prestigious families. Che Ju Chul sat filling the empty room with only pressure and his presence. However, we are still unable to identify them. They are too human-like to be considered jinns, but much too violent to be considered humans. Today, the secretary's report was unusually long. Something that was neither jinn, monster, 
nor human, something stronger than jinns possessing intelligence equal to humans. Che Juchia listened with his eyes closed and grabbed the cane beside his throne. Strange beings. Ku Che Juchul's cane touched the floor, immediately, a shockwave pulsed out. The magic power in the atmosphere trembled, shaking the entire castle. The association exists to deal with such things. Just leave it to them. Understood. The secretary nodded with respect. There is also another matter that requires chairman's attention. This time, a strange hologram appeared. Seeing this, Che Juchul's face showed a faint change. Light flickered from his sharp, frowning eyes. Black Lotus. It was a symbol Che Juchul already knew. It symbolized that the children who scattered long ago had resumed their activities. At the same time, it symbolized the roar of return of a pet he had once abandoned. However, Che Juchul didn't feel anything. His heartbeat was just as slow as always, and his emotionless skin was as cold as ice. We're currently in the process of contacting guilds and information agencies to gain information about him. Che Juchul put his hand out without a word, and the secretary put a stack of documents on his hand. The first page is our top choice. Truth Agency. Che Juchul had heard of the name of the information agency on the first page. Truth Agency. Its motto was swiftness and accuracy, and over the years, it had quietly become a giant in its field through its detailed and accurate reports. Of course, as members of the Violet Banquet were generally selfish, the general public didn't know about this agency. We planned to request this agency first and even sent them a message about it, but they've recently entered a hiatus. We believe they are in the middle of expanding their business and network of informants. Che Juchil flipped through the documents one by one, then threw the stack away. Don't concern yourselves with it. Thinking about it now. There was no need to investigate them. If they had memories of their past, they should be unable to bite him easily. After all, even an abandoned dog remembered their master. Che Juchul was about to end the conference when a trivial curiosity struck him. How is my granddaughter doing? Young Lady Nayun is doing well inside the tower. She is said to enter the top 100 ranking soon. That's enough. You can leave now. Understood. At Che Juchul's words, his secretary disappeared like smoke. Inside the huge, empty castle, the old man slowly closed his eyes. Suddenly, he remembered the past when he still faintly had his emotions. The rookies who introduced themselves as the chameleon troop and dared to offer him a deal. The children who were drunk on their unstable power and tried to grab onto his sleeve. Unfortunately, the memory was too old for him to recall clearly. SSSS. At that moment, the small lamp lighting the room flickered off. A thick darkness descended in the spacious castle. Inside this darkness, Che Juchil opened his eyes. His eyes glowed with immeasurably deep magic power. The leaves swayed in the blowing wind. From the ground, hot water bubbled and shot up. Gentle sunshine engulfed everything. The footsteps of wild animals filled the quiet mountain. I waited for Kim Seho to speak in midst of the peaceful scenery fit for classical music. Kim Ha Jin? Finally, Kim Seho called my name. Only then did I grin and turn around. Hey, is that really you? You bet. Stop spacing out and coming. I don't have much time left. Above Kim Seho's head was the number. 216. That was 16 hours more than me. I'd guess that we were both equally courteous to the system. Kim Soha must have received more time because his alignment was righteousness. As for me, I'd imagine my alignment was neutral, perfectly fit for a side character like me. Kim Soha came towards me without a word. He stopped right in front of the hot spring and awkwardly scratched the back of his neck, coming. Once I said that. Kim Soho finally stretched his leg towards the water. You're gonna keep your clothes on? Oh right. Kim Soho moved opposite me and took off his clothes behind the bushes. I couldn't see him, but I could hear the sound of his clothes falling on the ground. It was how do I put it quite unpleasant. After placing his heavy leather armor and other garments on the ground, Kim Soho entered the hot spring. We were finally face to face with each other. Splash splash. Clearly dazzled by the sparkling water. Kim Soho splashed the water a few times with his hands before throwing me a question. Where are we? Sixth floor, the hot spring of peace. The system should have told you that already. It did, but Kim Soho looked at me with suspecting eyes. What? Nothing. Anyway, 
It's good to see you. Kim Soho suddenly raised his upper body and tried to approach me. I quickly reached out to stop him. Don't come near me. Why? Just because. I feel kind of uncomfortable. Kim Soho's body was most likely flawless. Not only did he have the perfect body with well-balanced muscles, but his symbol of manhood should also be perfect. I wasn't too bad myself, but I still didn't want to compare myself to him. Okay. Sure. Kim Soho sat back down. I started the conversation first. Has it been? Three years. Kim Soho gave a small smile and shook his head. Four years. That long? Yeah. It's been a while. Oh, by the way, thanks for the armor and guidebook. I'm still using the same armor. That's good. Silence followed. It was our first reunion in nearly four years, yet we didn't have much to say to each other. It was really awkward but that was okay. I wasn't here to have a little chit chat anyways. By the way, Kim Ha Jin, are you the only one here? Kim Soho asked me first. From the suspicious look on his face, I could sense that there was a hidden meaning behind the question. Ah, I quickly realized what he was referring to. Right about now, everyone else should be thinking that it was Black Lotus who entered the sixth floor first. Kim Soho was smart and knew how to read the air so he must have perceived the connection number. There was one other person besides me, I answered. It was true that there was another person. Kim Soho widened his eyes at my words. Then, Kim Ha Jin, you saw? Saw who? Black Lotus. The way Kim Soho spoke just now was somewhat boy-like, enjoying challenging a stronger opponent. It was one of the cliches for a protagonist. I nodded in silence. It seemed the notion that Kim Ha Jin equals Black Lotus didn't exist in Kim Soho's mind. It must mean he trusted me that much. There was no need for me to shatter his faith. Ah then, Ha Jin, did you fight the Black Lotus? Huh? Kim Soho's eyes began to twinkle all of a sudden. Well, I was indeed in a constant battle against myself over smoking, but no wait, maybe you won. After all, Black Lotus isn't here and you are. Well, number. I didn't need to fight him. The sixth floor is huge, and the time given to each player is different. I just caught a glimpse of him. Just the hair. Eh, you're lying. I managed to come up with an excuse, but Kim Soho kept teasing me. Oh. Whatever. Anyway, you do know that you have to train for 216 hours here, right? In an attempt to change the topic, I got straight to the point. Oh, yeah. Judging from all the buffs, that sounds reasonable. And I already found the seventh floor ticket. Kim Soho took out the ticket from his inventory. But you know what they say, never hastily spend what you earned with ease. Exactly. But that still wasn't enough. Kim Soho needed to become stronger than he was in the original story. Today, I was even willing to sacrifice myself. Anything that was good for him was good for me as well. I don't have much time left, so I'll be quick. Listen carefully. First, the hot spring of peace. If you meditate here, your stats will increase really fast. So spend at least 3-4 hours here every day doing breathing exercises. Kim Soho knew an effective breathing exercise. It was a unique technique that he learned in the other world. During his stay here, he should be able to easily raise all of his stats by 3 points. Also, to the right of this place, you'll find a bamboo forest that looks like it's made of jewels. Next the Jewel Forest, then the Dark King Mountain Range. I taught him all the places that he could use for training. This should have saved him the 12 hours that he otherwise would have spent looking for information. You got it? Yeah? I took notes through the system. Good. And here? I had only 3 minutes left. There wasn't enough time for me to explain anything else. Lastly, I took out the stigma crystal. There were eight crystals in total. I extracted two crystals every day and saved eight just for Kim Soho. What are those? Gemstones. They're really good medicine that speeds up your growth. Take one every day. Level 4 Origin Mana Crystal. Growth Bonus. Level 4 Stat Increase Bonus. Upon Consumption. You receive 7.777% growth increase for 24 hours, only valid on 6F. A. Eh? Suddenly, Kim Soha's expression became somewhat strange. Even his cheeks appeared rosy, perhaps due to the hot spring. Why are you looking at me like that, huh? Oh, it's just that. I'm really grateful, but why are you doing all this for me? Did you know I'd come here? How come your explanation is so detailed? I'm moved. Fair questions. But as my time was almost up, 
I didn't have time to answer any of them, don't worry about that, just start training. Again, what I wanted was for this tower and reality to not stray far from each other, in other words, I want this tower to coexist with the outside world. To make my wish come true, I needed Kim Soha's help. That was why I was helping him out. In any case, I did everything I could. The rest was up to Kim Soho. It was good to see you. The moment I finished talking, system windows popped up. Zero o'clock. Time is up. Returning to the fifth floor. You can no longer enter the sixth floor. Hey, wait. Kim Soho was trying to say something but my vision distorted before I could hear him, the warmth of the hot spring disappeared in an instant, and I felt cold ground beneath my feet, icy wind blew past me and my whole body trembled, 5f, materialized demon realm, I was back on the fifth floor, ugh, so cold, I took out my gear from the inventory and put them back on, then I tried to use the ticket to the seventh floor right away, however, boom, suddenly, I heard a loud bang coming from a distance, whoa, what was that, the sound was too big to ignore, I scouted the area with the thousand mile eyes, it was pretty far, but everything was clear as crystal to me, oh, there was a huge fight, and not just one or two, or three or four, a group of almost twenty players was creating a real chaos, I couldn't really grasp the situation, all I knew was that everyone was fighting against everyone else in the midst of pandemonium, this wasn't on my schedule, but I couldn't simply ignore it, I approached quickly, watching others fight was fun and all, but I recognized many familiar faces as well, I drove the dwarven supercar and arrived at the site of the fight soon enough, I didn't want to get caught up in the fight, so I climbed to the top of a nearby mountain and observed the battlefield below, other players were also watching the fight from a distance, wow, the most notable player was without a doubt Kyauk Junjiong, simply put, he was a war god a monster shrouded in high level equipment that I had given to him, the price people had to pay for messing with the monster named Kyauk Junjiong was too great, quang, boom, with just one punch, the earth cracked and a huge explosion burst into the air, most players couldn't even dream of approaching Kyauk Junjiong, and even Aileen struggled to stop him with her spirit speech, Harjing, I was completely absorbed in Aileen and Kyauk Junjiong's fight when someone grabbed at my sleeve, I glanced back, but nobody was there, a ghost, I was getting goosebumps when a voice came from below, over here, I lowered my gaze and discovered a little girl, a Caucasian, maybe six or seven years old, her skin was fair, and she had beautiful blonde hair, who are you, the girl gave a lopsided grin, seemingly unfit for her age, it's me Jain, huh, Jain revealed the whole story, apparently, a quarrel broke out between the three members of the chameleon troop and the party made up of Aileen, Jin Seon, Yi Yong -a, and Shin Jong -ek, all because the crystal steel that the chameleon troop found was a special one, so it doesn't work as a checkpoint, but gives out quests instead, a quest giving crystal steel, rewards from quests were quite decent, so fights often broke out over quest giving crystal steelies on the fifth floor, quest, ah it did give us a quest, Jain, disguised as a child, answered, what was it about, protecting the crystal steel for three hours, the reward is a special skill book called secret march, ah, well that was understandable, secret march was a good skill, I would have fought if I was in their shoes, too, in any case, the aggressive fight between the chameleon troop and Aileen's party over the quest captured the attention of many players, of course, most players wouldn't dare to intervene, but a few jinns, blinded by the reward, didn't keep away, evil societies Kim Hakpyo, Satan's servants Kim Mo Sung, and other famous jinns and their followers had bravely jumped into the fight, what about you, Jain, I ran away I didn't wanna fight, the way the young Jain spoke was quite amusing, her way of talking was the same, but her pronunciation was funny and her voice was high pitched, by the way, is that what you looked like as a child, ah, yeah, doesn't a child stand out more, that's true, but people hesitate before attacking me in this state and when they do, it's the end for them because I'll kill them first, um, such harsh words didn't suit her cute appearance, anyways, I formed a bow with ether, a black bow, quite refined in design, people might even mistake it for a peak grade artifact, and the reason I took out this bow was, of course, 
to participate in the fight below. I knocked five arrows on the bow and pulled on the bowstring. You're gonna shoot them, yeah? Just the jinns. Hajini really hates jinns always trying to kill them. I gave a small smile. Although I hadn't anticipated this kind of situation, it was a good chance. Jinns that I've been wanting to get rid of were all gathered in one place. I only let them be because killing them one by one would be a waste of time. Jain. You get out of here first. I infused two streaks worth of Stigma's magic power into the bow and the arrows. The bow resonated with my magic powers and glowed darkish red. I planned to shoot from multiple angles. The five arrows would kill exactly ten jinns. Well, maybe not Kim Hak Pyo and Kim Oh Sung. They knew how to take a hit. But, if you shoot from here, won't you stand out? It'll be fine if I run away right after. How? I smiled. You'll see. I just had to use the seventh floor ticket in my pocket right after shooting the arrows. Okay. Then I'll get going. Jine disappeared with quick steps. I waited for her to get far enough, and then let go of the bowstring. Quirk. Each of the five arrows, wrapped in Stigma's magic power, stretched in different directions towards the targets. It happened in less than a second. The arrows danced in the middle of the battleground. There were no noises, no screams. The victims fell to the ground without even knowing what had happened. Chweek. The arrows returned to me after completing their tasks. The moment I retrieved the arrows, I tore the ticket in half. Before others could locate me, my whole body shook violently. Entering the seventh floor. And, a system window appeared. Welcome to the seventh floor, Game Center, Chapter 194. Hierarchy, 2. The situation quickly fell into chaos. Aileen and her party weren't intending on fighting. At first, they just wanted to register themselves on the Crystal Steel's checkpoint. If the mysterious people surrounding the Crystal Steel refused to let them, she planned to try to persuade them before using Brout Force. However, the crystal steel wasn't a checkpoint, underscore. Quest discovered. Summary. You discovered a group of people trying to steal an ownerless crystal steel. Goal. Steal the crystal steel from that group. Reward. Special skill acquisition book. Level 3 secret march. Level 5 crystal steel. Underscore. A quest suddenly started and the opposing group labeled her as an enemy. Aileen was slightly taken aback. A giant from the opposing group smiled at her. Aileen was familiar with him just as he was familiar with her. You. The moment she muttered that one word, the fight began. The giant man took off his robe and shot forward like the wind. He was clearly asking for a fight. However, Aileen stopped his charge with a single word. Stop. Just one word froze the man who arrived in front of her. His feet dug into the ground as he tried to resist the power of spirit speech. However, Kyauk Junjiong was still stopped. And that was the start of the true fight. Another man shot up from behind Kyauk Junjiong's large body. It was a slim man holding a spear. I'll be your opponent. Shin Jong X stopped the man with his own spear. Coop. A heavy pressure fell on his spear upon contact. However, the pressure was still manageable. Hold on just a bit. From behind. Long range reinforcement arrived. Yi Yong as Hellfire shot toward them, and Jin Seon shot arrows without using the medium called a bow. Kyauk Jun Jai Yong's body clashed with Yi Yong as fire, and Jin Yuan's spear clashed with Jin Seon's magic arrows. Shockwaves bursted out and whirlpools of magic power erupted. The ground cracked from a single exchange of attacks, and the following exchange shook heaven and earth. The full power attacks of these high-ranking superhumans were even able to split the clouds in the sky. When Kyauk Junjiong and Aileen began to run low on magic power, the hyenas jumped in. Miss Aileen, there are more enemies coming. I'll shoot them down. Jin Seon was the first one to notice them with her excellent eyesight. Along with her announcement, several hundred arrows rained down from the sky. They clearly distinguished friend from foe and only hurled towards the enemy. In response. Jins who were aiming for an opportunity to attack burst out at once. Of the 50 jins that shot out, half were swept away by Jin Seon's attack. However, Evil Society's executive, Kim Hakpyo, blocked Jin Seon's arrow with tentacles of demonic energy, and Satan's servants Kim Mo Sung created a powerful barrier around him. You are ha ha ha. Kyauk Jun Jaeyong burst out into laughter at the sudden appearance of jins. His powerful laughter shook the earth. 
and he faced the pandemonium with sincere happiness. Come, he roared, and the resulting shockwave caused blood to burst out from the ears of a few jinns. Subsequently, Kyauk Jun Jiaong began to go wild. As his opponent's attacks could hardly pierce his armor, there was nothing stopping him from being reckless. He jumped up like a gorilla and crushed the heads of every jinn he came across. He really is crazy. Aileen murmured apathetically and chased after Kyauk Jun Jiaong. Quang, quang. While Kyauk Jun Jiaong's fists were sweeping through jinns, Aileen unleashed another wave of magic power. Stop. You gorilla bastard. Spirit speech restrained Kyauk Jun Jiaong's movements. Frozen in place, Kyauk Jun Jiaong's eyes turned towards Aileen. Where do you think you're running away to? You should play with me. Aileen smiled, and Kyauk Jun Jiaong returned a similar smile. The moment they were about to estimate each other's true level of power. Silent streaks of light flashed through the battlefield. Black light flickered through the sky as the world seemed to stop for a moment. Heartbeats stopped in the chaotic battlefield. Thud, thud. A chins who were pierced by the mysterious streaks of light fell to the ground. Blood flowed out from their pierced necks and their bodies soon scattered away. No one had seen this attack coming. Everyone in the battlefield fell silent and tried to comprehend the situation. SSSS. Meanwhile, Jin Seon unleashed her magic power and restrained the movements of her allies. Question mark. Yi Yong and Shin Jong Ek looked at her curiously. Don't move. Jin Seon muttered. In her mind, the previous attack was a warning. If anyone moved, the mysterious attack would turn towards them next. At the same time, Jin Seon used the eyes given to her by her divine archer gift to search for the sharpshooter's location. However, she couldn't detect the sharpshooter at all. The silence on the battlefield continued for a while. Fuck. Until Kim Hakpio's shouting broke it. His body was completely black as he had been in the state of devil transformation. It was thanks to this that he was able to survive the sudden ambush. Waiting room. The remaining jinns were also unable to locate the mysterious sharpshooter. Quickly realizing that they were at a massive disadvantage, they escaped using their emergency waiting room teleportation tickets. The hyenas all fell back and the battlefield was left with the original forces once more, see. Kyauk Jun Jiaong clicked his tongue, seemingly having been contacted by someone. Screw off. He gestured to shoo Aileen's party away as though his interest had dwindled. However, Aileen stood still at the forefront of the battlefield without moving a single inch. Jin Seon noticed Aileen's desire to fight and approached her. Miss Aileen, let's fall back for now. Aileen clenched her teeth silently. Was she shocked? Or was she just too proud to give up? We didn't plan on fighting anyways. We'll be at a huge disadvantage if we continue. If the previous streaks of light attacked them, the ambush would have taken their lives instead. However, the mysterious sharpshooter only attacked the jinns. Jin Seon didn't know why, but since the sharpshooter seemed to want to let them go, it was best to go in her mind. Aileen Se Yi Yong A also chimed in. Ha. Huh. Aileen finally let out a sigh and turned around. Fine, I'll leave. Aileen's party slowly began to distance themselves from the crystal steel. Just like that, the huge battle between many high ranking players was ended by a single sharpshooter. 7F. Game Center. Welcome to the Game Center. As you are the first player to enter the seventh floor, you receive the special skill acquisition book. Level 4 algorithm as a reward. Along with new system alerts, I arrived at the 7th floor lobby. Although it was called the Game Center, it didn't look like an arcade from Earth. It was much more futuristic, like something out of a science fiction movie. Humanoid robots were walking around, and there was a huge, gray pathway leading to an unknown destination. Welcome, customer. At that moment, a robot wearing a suit approached me. Its body was similar to a human's, but its face was clearly that of a machine. I was the one who designed this floor, but it was still cool to see it in person. Hello, nice to meet you. I knew who this robot was, so I talked politely on purpose. I am APG 365. It is my duty to identify and register your existence. You have the choice to refuse, but you will have to return to the lower floor. No. That's fine. I emphasized that I was willing to cooperate. Level? 
Question mark, APG 365, the robot in front of me was high leveled enough for me to only see question marks, of course, with my smartwatch, I was able to confirm that it was level 55, the robot's name was meant to be a reference to the great one, and there were 365 of them on the 7th floor, each of them was strong enough to obliterate the current Kyauk Jun Jiaoyong or Aileen in one blow. Please stick your wrist out. As such, I didn't dare to offend it in any way. All hail Alpha Gonim. Ah, yes. I put my arm out. The robot grabbed my wrist. You can pay 5000 TP to get an advanced Neurotech chip implanted. The advanced Neurotech chip is definitely worth its price. If you are lacking in funds, you may choose to pay 1000 TP for a basic electronic chip. I'll go with the advanced chip. I took out 5000 TP without hesitation. This was the only difficult part of the 7th floor. 5000 TP wasn't a cheap price at this point. Most players would choose to go for the 1000 TP chip and think about how to skip the 7th floor with it. But that was the worst choice. This advanced Neurotech chip was one of the best gifts the 7th floor had to offer. Here you go. I gave the robot 5000 TP. Confirming. A beam of light shot out of the robot's eyes and scanned the TP. After confirming that the bills I gave weren't fake. It collected the money and jammed a chip into my wrist. A sharp pain instantly traveled through my arm and shook even my spine. Cuck. This chip is linked to your nerves. Causing any sort of trouble on this floor will have you restrained. Got it. Arg, that hurt. I slowly stretched the sore parts of my body and stared at the series of system alerts I received. Your body has been linked to the seventh floor's advanced Neurotech chip. Now to be called Extra 7's personal chip. You are a lucky person. You received a master grade chip. Your strength and speed increases by 0.5 points. Extra 7's personal chip is being analyzed for unique effects. You receive battle sense support from your chip. You can upgrade your chip inside the game center's upgrade center. The seventh floor was one of the methods to artificially enhance my innate physical limits. Although it was easy to reach the eighth floor from the seventh, I had to spend some time on the 7th floor for this reason. Of course, I would end up spending a lot too. Player Extra 7 has been confirmed. How many are inside right now? There are 4 people enjoying games at the moment. The 4 people should be administrators. One of them should be the 7th floor's administrator, and the other 3 should be from other floors. Players weren't the only ones who could climb the tower. Prestigious citizens could climb the tower if they wanted to. It would just be unadvised and difficult, since they didn't have benefits that players received like the inventory, private waiting room, etc. The game center has many fun games. You can purchase many things with the points obtained from games. So please take your time to look around at what we have to offer. With that, APG 365 left. I scanned the seventh floor's scenery past Alpha Go's shoulders. The seventh floor's concept was science fiction and games. The science fiction part was the chip that was just implanted in my wrist and the game part was exactly what it sounded like. Fighting games, RPGs, board games, poker all sorts of games could be found on this floor. At that moment, a system alert popped up. 53 kinds of games exist on the 7th floor. Players may receive special rewards depending on the records they set on different games. The special rewards will be given out once 1000 players enter the 7th floor. First, I headed towards the section of the game center specializing in virtual reality games. Wing, wing. Meanwhile, my smartwatch continued to vibrate. You obtain 7 SP. You obtain 6 SP. It seemed the arrows I just fired caused a bit of a commotion. In any case, I followed a sign reading, virtual reality games and arrived at an arcade. Rows of virtual reality capsules were lined up in a huge room. Virtual reality gaming capsule. There are 27 games stored in this capsule. You can purchase special items with points obtained from playing games on the 7th floor. To play games, you must exchange your TP for cash. The game center's currency. Note. You cannot re-exchange cash for TP. You may receive cash as a reward depending on your performance. Just like the system said, the game center had its own currency called cash. Players could use this currency to purchase items. The 8th floor ticket was among them. If I remembered correctly, 
it should be about 10,000 cash. HNNG, I stretched and stood in front of a capsule. Then, I put my wrist against it. SSS, the capsule opened. This virtual reality console looked like a bubble chair. But before I sat down, there was one thing I needed to do. Scan. The number 26 was inscribed on the capsule. That was more than enough. Young Dwarf's dexterity would help me with all important physical aspects of different games, and their random consolidation system would enhance the capsule's overall functionalities. Fighting games, RPG games, FPS games, and MOBA games were all available on the capsule. I was confident that I could take first place in any single player game. How comfortable. I lied down on the capsule. As everything about the capsule was strengthened through the random consolidation system, the comfortableness of its seat was included as well. Oh right. Boss you can come up now. Before I closed the capsule, I sent boss a message. Soon, the capsule closed, my vision turned black and system messages popped up. Welcome, Extra 7. Here are the list of games you can play. 1. Fierce Charge. 2. Gladiators Battle. 3. Princess Maker. Prestige, Rury Restaurant. We were taught our standing in the hierarchy, ha ha. Jin Seon laughed amidst a somber atmosphere. You think this is funny? Aelin furrowed her brows. And what do you mean we were taught our standing in the hierarchy? We only retreated because you couldn't find where the sharpshooter was. Shouldn't a sharpshooter handle the opposing side's sharpshooter? QM, you're right. It seems I am still lacking in training. In truth, Jin Seon's performance couldn't be called lacking. After all, it was her rain of magic arrows that killed 20 of the 50 jinns that attacked. But because she couldn't do the most important task, she didn't make any excuses. HNNNG, how embarrassing. Just how many people were watching that fight? Aileen buried her head on the desk and squirmed. Wiggle, wiggle. Soon, she raised her head slightly, revealing a wood mark on her forehead. Because of the towers system, most people have seen the footage by now. I suggest you don't look at the public forum for a while. Coo. Aileen slammed her head on the wooden table once more. How's everyone else doing? Jin Seon stopped paying attention to the depressed kid and turned towards Shin jong -ek. He was looking down at his food with a somewhat solemn look. Shin jong -ek said he didn't answer even at Jin Seon's calling. The shock he received seemed to be great. In truth. Shin jong -ek spent the entire duration of the fight battling one-on-one -on -one with the unknown Spearman. The result of the fight could be easily guessed by looking at his face. Although their fight didn't reach a conclusion, if they were being scored by a judge, the outcome would have been one-sided. In terms of technique, Shin jong -ek was overwhelmed. He could see that his opponent was going easy on him too. How come you're the only one who's unaffected? Jin Seon looked at yong -a. He was eating fried rice looking like he didn't have a care in the world. Eh? Oh, um, I'm the type of person who doesn't get stressed out by such things. Yi Yong's favorite word was leisure. His motto was living a leisurely life. It was only with his innate talent that he joined the Temple of Justice. If he put in effort, his standing would undoubtedly be equal to aliens. After all, he was known to be a genius whose gift and talent were equal to aliens. What about you? You don't seem affected either. Yi Yong asked. Jin Seon made a bitter smile and shook her head. No, I'm affected. The mysterious sharpshooter's attack was one thing, but his stealth was what really astonished Jin Seon. Where did he go after shooting his arrows? Could it be that he fired from beyond my eyesight's four kilometers radius? Even if that were the case, there was still another question. Just how did an attack from such a distance carry such killing power? I'm very uncomfortable as well. Simply put, even the divine archer Jin Seon was feeling threatened. Fierce charge. First, extra seven. Gladiators battle. First, extra seven. Minigame heaven. First, extra seven. Spring gunner. First, extra seven. 2031. First, Extra 7. Of the 27 games stored in the virtual reality gaming capsule, I took first place in every game other than the three that Kim Seho would get first place in. As my performance was overwhelming, not even an administrator should be able to surpass my results. Cash, 38,624. Naturally, I received more than enough cash to purchase the 8th floor ticket. With that, 
I was done with the seventh floor. I could go up to the eighth floor after a single day. However, there was one last thing I had to do before that. Pew oo, I sighed. Jin Sayuk would soon arrive at the second floor. Just like I promised last time, I would have to pay her another visit. I put on my hoodie and robe and left the arcade. You oh, I almost bumped into someone. White hair, sly looking face. It was the stereotypical face of a western noble. Oh how's it going? He looked at me and smiled. I felt like I knew who he was and smiled back. Ah. Uh, Yes, I'm the seventh floor's administrator, Simid. Simid reached out and grabbed my hand. Ah, yes, nice to meet you too. Ha ha, I'm happy to have my first customer. Not to mention, he glanced at the arcade and put on a thin smile. Such an accomplished customer too. I have a suggestion. Do you want to play cards with us? Cards? Us? I tilted my head. I didn't expect the seventh floor's administrator to make such an offer so easily. Yep. Someone ran away, so we're short one person. Administrators often don't hang out with players, but you're the first one to enter my floor. I looked at Simid. In truth, I didn't know what kind of a person he was. Just like how I completed all my task on the seventh floor today. This floor didn't appear much in the original story either. Sorry, I don't really have time. I was confident in winning no matter what game we played. Still, I didn't want to follow him. Not only was there no merit, but gambling on this floor would all happen in cash. For the record, cash could only be used on the seventh floor, and it was stored in the chip that every player was required to buy. Although TP could be exchanged for cash. The other way wasn't true. As I already had an ample amount of cash, I didn't need to waste my time trying to make more. All I had left to do was to upgrade my chip at the upgrade center. We'll be gambling with TP. Your pocket seems to be full, so, I'll join. Now, the story was different. Oh 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 what a bold young man. Great, follow me. I followed Simid without hesitation. The only thing on my mind was how much I could get out of them without angering them too much. Walking past a lobby guarded by several robots, we arrived at a VIP room adorned with gold. Open. The door opened at Simid's command. I am back. I found someone, so we can play for a bit longer. Who did you bring? I told you, I'm not going to play with robots. Inside the room, a familiar voice rang out. I brought a player. Not a robot. What? Are you mad? I'm completely sane. He's quite rich, and we can always go easy on him. We're playing for fun anyways, right? Samid glanced at me as he explained himself. I walked up and stood next to him. Then, I looked at the inside of the VIP room. A? Eh? A short exclamation of surprise came out of my mouth. At the center of the huge room was a gambling table. One of the two administrators sitting around the table was. Oh? The third floor's administrator, Medea, Chapter 195, Hierarchy, 3. Floor administrators were existences summoned using the immense magic power condensed in the tower. Some, such as Medea, Aeen, and Heimdall, were mythical heroes, and others, such as Luke and Simid, were my original creations. Mythical hero or not? They were far from perfect. They had their own obsessions and desires as they possessed self-consciousness far greater than any human. This was also precisely the reason that they helped or hindered players from climbing the tower. At any rate, TP was an important asset to the administrators as well. Raise. Madea threw an additional 5000 TP on the table. Call. I put down 5000 TP as well. Madea rested her chin on her hand keeping a poker face. I was currently playing poker without any complicated rules like the high-low rule. It was just the traditional Texas Hold'em where the player with the better luck and guts won. Surprisingly, we were evenly matched in the beginning. I didn't get anything better than two pair and I was often the one with a worse hand. I panicked a little thinking the administrators were scheming against me together. But economies of scale and the law of large numbers finally play their part. Over time, as the number of rounds increased, I gained the upper hand. And this was the result. My opponents were Simid, the seventh floor administrator, Cadmus, the fifth floor administrator, and Medea the third floor administrator. Half of the money they had on the table was now in my possession, and the last two standing were Medea and me. How much did you win from me? Medea asked casually. After two hours of playing, I had won quite a sum of TP from her, 
totaling at least 100,000. That was the reason Medea had abandoned her formalities and started addressing me more casually. Oh, I don't know, maybe 130,000, 140,000. Medea silently bit her lip. Then she threw a golden bill worth 1000 TP on the table. Will you keep going? I smiled at Medea. Yes, of course. I had no idea what kind of cards Medea had. In fact, I didn't even know the proper amount to bet and generally had no clue how poker worked. Still, the only way I could lose at this point was if she cheated through card forgery. However, the cards we were using were made with great magic. Even I couldn't see through them with my gift. Medea couldn't possibly forge cards like these. Well, perhaps she could, but the magic power needed to do something of that level would surely be noticeable. Really? You must have a nice hand. I put forward 1000 TP in silence. Currently, the money on the table was 148000 TP. The bet was large enough that even Medea couldn't casually glance over it. Yet, she added another 3000 TP on top of that. You calling? I finally started getting anxious or not. There was really no reason. I pretended to think long and hard, scratching the tabletop with my fingernails to fake nervousness. Then, with a sigh, I took out all the TP I had in my inventory. I only have 2300 TP left. I took off the robe that Medea had been eyeing for a while. Will this work? A small smile spread across Medea's face but she buried it quickly and then nodded hesitantly. Yeah, sure. That's okay. It was now time for us to reveal our hands. Although I was a little nervous, I was confident that I wouldn't lose. The best Medea could have was probably a four of a kind. Please. Go first. PFT. Sure. Madi opened her hand with a smile. Four aces, as expected. It was a four of a kind made up of aces. Exclamation mark. I deliberately put on a shocked expression. I widened my eyes and shivered with my gaze fixated on her cards. In truth it wasn't acting but a natural physiological phenomenon. To think that all this TP belongs to me now. Well then. I'll take them now. Medea's lips curved into a smile. She put both of her arms on the table and wrapped them around the 200000 TP. She started raking in the money and the robe, when, squeeze, I grabbed her. What? Are you crazy? Ah, a bummer. I spoke in a trembling voice to the frowning Medea. Oh, I, I won. I showed my hand. Medea's body stiffened instantly. Her eyes which had been sparkling like diamonds just a moment ago were now robbed of their vitality. Every gesture of her hand and her body used to be so elegant but now she was nothing but a frozen statue. Oh, a straight flush. Wow, this is, wow. Samid, who had been watching from the sidelines, expressed amazement. I played poker for 100 years and I've seen this hand only 1001 times. You are ha ha. Congrats. I'm sorry. I pushed Medea's arms off the table. She moved without resistance and leaned her back against the chair. Her face looked as if her soul had escaped from her body. But she only had herself to blame. There was no room for manipulation or fraud in this game. Medea probably knew better than anyone else that magic or a trick could never deceive them. The game was played fair and square with only luck and skill as assets. Medea was lucky enough. Only, I was the emperor of luck when it came to games of chance. Good game. I put the 200,000 TP in my inventory. Medea vacantly watched the money disappear into thin air. No way. Gambling is the path to ruin. That was probably right for most people. Just not for me. 363,324 TP. I had over 36,000 TP. Considering that I started with 2,500 TP. I really robbed them big time. About two thirds of the money I won probably belonged to Medea originally. A straight flush over quads. What's going on? Just what is. Yet to recover from the shock, Medea buried her face in her hands. It was such a pitiful sight that I set the robe back down on the table. You can have this robe. Think of it as a winner's tip. But I didn't bother saying the last part out loud. After all, Nothing good would come from provoking an administrator too much. I got out of the gambling house and stood in front of a sign in the corner of the seventh floor with the words, Upgrade Center, written across it. Now that I had the money, I was going to spend every last bit of it on enhancements. Welcome to the Advanced Neurotech Chip Upgrade Center. A robot that looked similar to APG but with a more mechanical style of clothing welcomed me. Hi, I'm here to make enhancements. 
please select what you would like from this list. The robot projected the catalog in the air. 1. Increase strength by 1 point. 15,000 TP. 2. Increase dexterity by 1 point. 15,000 TP. 3. Increase endurance by 1 point. 15,000 TP. 4. Increase sensibility by 1 point. 15,000 TP. 5. Increase stamina by 1 point. 15,000 TP. 6. Increase the unique function of Extra 7's personal chip, Battle Sense. 30,000 TP. 7. Add function connection and synchronization. 120,000 TP. 8. You can repeat the enhancements as many times as you'd like, but the price will increase by twofold with every purchase. Yeah, I know. For now, I want to do everything from 1 to 6. I could do anything now, but I noticed a subtle ambiguity. What does number 7, add function, mean? I have detected something other than your personal chip wrapped around your body. You can connect and synchronize it to your personal chip, and you will be able to utilize it more easily. My body. Ah, you mean ether? I gathered ether surrounding my body onto the palm of my hand. The robot scanned the transparent ball of ether that was about the size of a baseball. Yes, this appears to be the material. It is special and marvelous. It only adheres to you and makes your body stronger. Ah, uh, so that means I can connect my personal chip to ether? Yes, because the procedure is complicated, the price is high. However, after the initial sink, this ether will become much stronger. Robots did not lie. I couldn't even dream of spending 1200 TP under normal circumstances. But I didn't have any reason not to undergo this procedure right now. In other words, thank you, my dear. Then I'll do everything up to number 7. You're the one performing the procedure, right? Yes, that is correct. Before that, can you give me your hand? The surgeon robot stretched his arm towards me. I grabbed his wrist and whispered, Scan. Robots, despite their intelligence, were treated as objects. At my words, the number 22 appeared on his wrist. With this, he'll be able to perform the surgery better. Here, 225,000 TP. After that, I paid 225,000 TP in cash. The surgeon robot checked them for counterfeit and then opened the door which led to the operating room. Please follow me. How long will this take? An hour should be enough. That's good. Can you do it so that it doesn't hurt? That is impossible. 3F. Prestige. English Royal Court's hideout was home to a total of 23 guild members. The hideout was already at level 4, it even has an office for the vice leader now, all thanks to Rachel whose reputation as an elementalist was growing day by day. Inside the hideout, the dignified vice leader was browsing the public forum. Underscore. Anyone see Black Lotus on the fifth floor? I did. Too bad I didn't have a recorder on me frown. How was it? I couldn't see clearly. He shot arrows instantly killing the jinns, then everyone stopped moving. He was like I'm here to finish the war. Why didn't they move though? Semicolon, to evade any arrows that might come their way? Have you never fought before? Seriously though isn't this Lotus or whatever basically on the same level as 9 stars in reality? It doesn't make sense otherwise, probably as strong as the immortal. I'd say. But isn't Che Juchil stronger than the Nine Stars? Here's my verdict as someone who's seen the battle. Che Juchil wins in close combat and Lotus wins in long ranged combat. Is Che Juchil or Lotus your friend? Who are you to judge them? Has anyone been to Earth recently? Is there a bounty on Black Lotus? What bounty? He hasn't committed any crime yet, and even if there was, who the hell is going to kill him? They'd be dead long before they even get to see his face. Lololol what can you do even if there was a bounty lolol? Black Lotus is gonna come and find you now after reading this. Underscore. Rachel had just returned from a castle attack, but everyone was only talking about Black Lotus. Rachel put on a sullen expression and pursed her lips in a pout. After scrolling through the forum a bit, Rachel checked to make sure there was no one nearby and searched for her own name. Search Rachel, Elementalist. How did the castle attack turn out this time? Heard there was an Elementalist. Elementalists must be super effective in castle attacks for the top guilds to be letting that lousy English Royal Court Guild keep participating. However, it just made her feel worse. If you're gonna compliment me, 
do just that, but don't talk bad about my guild. She regretted looking herself up. Afterwards, Rachel pulled up the Guild Alliance group chat. Guild Alliance. 2525. This was a chat room consisting only of the leaders and executives of each guild. There was a new announcement. Before we capture the fifth castle, there will be two three days of rest. Everyone can return to Earth or do what they want in the tower. Weapon Master, Essence of the Strait will leave behind seven members and return to Earth. Young Fly, Desolate Moon will leave behind six members. The purpose of this announcement was to prompt everyone to take a break together. If some took a rest while others worked, then the ones taking a break were likely to feel left behind. To prevent this, everyone would rest at the same time. Rachel agreed readily. It was about time she went back to England anyways. Ding. Suddenly, she received a message. It was from Extra 7. He finally replied back to the message she sent two days ago. 36 hours. A reply in 36 hours. Rachel narrowed her eyes and stared at the message. Extra 7. Oh, rest days? Yeah. I read about it on the public forum there was even an announcement. I plan on heading out then, too. The Guild Alliance was actively encouraging participation in the rest days. They even asked the individual rankers for cooperation. You worked hard until now and it's about time you take a break was what they wanted to say. Where are you now, Harjin said. As she sent the message, she sulkily thought to herself, will the reply take about 48 hours this time? Extra 7 me? I'm on the fourth floor. I'm just grinding away because there's something I need to make. But to her surprise, the reply returned quickly. She rubbed the back of her neck awkwardly and wrote her message in a more light-hearted tone. Aha equals, then come see me in England. There's a festival on Clancy Islet around this time of the year, greater than underscore less than. Extra 7. Okay. You said things were going well in England? Yes underscore dot. Please give me a call when you arrive. I'll send someone to pick you up. Then, a minute passed. Five minutes. Ten minutes. As expected. The reply stopped shortly after. She had already gotten used to it. Something probably came up, or maybe he ran into somebody. Rachel turned the messenger off and opened the auction house. Question mark. Immediately, something caught her eye. Level 4 black suit, J, green order. Rachel didn't know this, but the real name of this suit was Level 4 Black Messiah's horrible suit. Kim Harjin had been using it for a while and he put it on the auction house to switch to a better piece of gear. Ah, the moment she laid her eyes on the suit, she gave an involuntary exclamation. The design was beautiful. It was cool and efficient and had great effects as well. Rachel swallowed her saliva and slowly moved her finger towards their bid button. The next morning, the third tutorial had ended and players had arrived on the second floor. Jin Sayuk was hiding herself thoroughly. She put on a robe she bought in Tutorial Town and even applied stealth oil all over her body. She even had that skill she got from the black ticket. Survival shouldn't be too difficult. It was humiliating to have to hide like a cockroach, but she consoled herself with the thought that she had only taken a step back now in order to move forward two steps in the future. And things were going well in the beginning. She didn't place her magic power on display like she stupidly did last time. Instead, she concealed it just like a wild beast. During this time, strange men calling themselves newbie hunters attacked her. But she easily fought them off and even stole their TP. Really, everything was going smoothly. However when she was wandering about the jungle in search of the elevator, she suddenly felt a chill. At the same time, a wind blew that shook the atmosphere. Before she was even aware of the attack, Jin Sayuk had thrown herself on the ground out of instinct. Cuck. Something that had shot toward her brushed her side. Even though it was only a graze. A lump of her flesh had been cut off. She stopped the waterfall of blood with magic power and thought to herself, he's here. Her body trembled and her heart rate went up. Where is he? She scouted the area by infusing magic power into her eyes but found nothing. Streaks of light, much stronger than before, 
began pouring down on her again. Kuang Jin Seiyuk shrouded herself in magic power and rolled on the ground. The air pressure cut her hair and left a scar on her cheek. Fuck. Jin Seiyuk couldn't predict the attacks. She couldn't point out where he was. The black trajectories made it difficult for her to track their source. The shooting from afar was tens of thousands of times more threatening than a blade out in the open. With no other choice, Jin Seiyuk ran. She ran with all her strength making her way through the bushes and jumping over swamps. She could feel her hands and lips tremble, not out of excitement nor exaltation, not happiness, joy, nor delight. She had never felt this way before. She didn't want to admit she was having this feeling, yet the streaks of light poured down again as if to ask for her recognition. Quang arrows caused explosions all around her. Jin Seiyuk managed to jump into an animal hole in the ground in time. Ha! Ha! She covered the hole with a barrier and caught her breath. Then she checked her health points. Vitality, 33 one hundredths. The situation was dire. It was only a matter of time before she was killed. She would die once again at his hands. Anger and resentment brought tears to her eyes. Her lungs filled with blood and her nose reddened. That fucking bastard. Jin Seiyu whispered in a trembling voice. Then suddenly, a pillar of unknown magic power shot up from the ground. The wave of magic power slowly began to take the form of a man. Jin Seiyuk was well aware of the phenomenon taking place before her eyes. Bell. She called his name out loud. The magic power completely materialized shortly after, and its owner gave a small smile. But Jin Seiyuk was more furious than welcoming. You son of a bitch. Don't get so upset. I came to help you, after all. The first thing Bell did was put up a barrier, SSSSS, a dome-shaped barrier engulfed the hole they were in. You asshole, if you hadn't taken my ticket in the first place, SHH, you'll break the barrier if you create a disturbance. Quang. The next explosion shook the hole. It was the arrows again, but Bell's barrier managed to block them just once, and that was enough. A violet light filled the hole. It was Bell's skill. Mass teleport. What the hell is this? You, you fucker. Teleportation. What? Let's go home. Even I can't win against him right now. Bell said that with a grin. Jin Seiyuk clenched her teeth. Bell was right. She needed to escape right now. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you for real. I know. I said it myself, right? That someday, you'll have to do so. Bell and Jin Seiyuk, they shared words that could be either a greeting or a curse and then turned into violet magic power and flew away. About three kilometers away, atop a tall zelk of a tree, a man tilted his head. Whoa! Kim Hajin put his bow and arrows away without much deliberation. It didn't really matter that the target had escaped. From the start, his goal today had been to make sure that she didn't notice. As long as she didn't realize what was on the arrow that grazed her, or if she realized too late, she would, without a doubt, face death. Return. He collected the dark or arrows with a murmur. The arrows took about three seconds to fly back. He had shot his arrows from an incredibly long range. The only reason Jin Sei could survive the initial shot was because of the distance between them. Although he failed to kill his target, Kim ha looked at the tip of an arrow without a hint of regret. A small amount of dark, sticky liquid was there. Level 4 liquefied Banshee's Curse Crystal. This was a solution made from the crystals that Kim ha collected on the fourth floor by deliberately being cursed by 13 Banshees. After extracting them from his body, he had put it on the arrowhead. By now, the curse should have seeped into every part of Jin Seiyuk. I wonder how long she'll last. Mercy was never an option to begin with. The moment he did, he would be the one to be killed in the future. He stared at where Jin Seiyuk was, then tore up the entrance ticket to the 8th floor. Chapter 196 A not so restful rest day. 1. You are the first player to enter the 8th floor. Welcome to 81F field of trials. You gain the first entrance rewards. Your bones become sturdier. Your muscles become thicker. Your spirit power capacity increases. The news of your advancement will be announced to all players in 1236 hours. This is the middle stage of the tower. You can advance to 82F when you reach the end of the field of trials. Be careful. There are those who despise outsiders at the end of the field of trials. They will try to hinder your advancement. But when you reach the end after breaking through all obstacles, they will acknowledge you. I arrived at the 8th floor, or more precisely, 
the floor ate one. I was close to the halfway mark of the Tower of Wish. Strictly speaking, I had climbed about 40% of the whole thing. But in a way, it wasn't wrong to call it 60-70% as I would climb much quicker after the ninth floor. In the original story, the ninth 14th floors ended in about 7 chapters. Of these, about three were about the ninth floor's calamities. Pew. -oo. I took a deep breath and opened my eyes. A beautiful scenery spread out before my eyes. A vast grass field, blue and clear sky, sunlight streaming down from cracks in white clouds. Staring at the horizon, I examined ether, which was fully fused with my body. Underscore. Ether infused with Neurotech chip, awakened, fused, mystic, formless evolving, a corporeal but formless weapon, adheres to its master or his weapon, reinforcing their strength, a portion of its potential was awakened through a mystical elemental's power, master selection, will not adhere to another being once a master is chosen, physical body reinforcement, increases all variable stats of its owner by 0.7 points, weapon reinforcement, adheres to its master's weapon and strengthens the weapon's attack power, ether itself can also form a weapon. Current weapon form ether rank, high rank. Detail materialization. Ether can manifest color and texture, cannot be too complex. Evolving weapon. All of the above functions evolve with its owner. Depending on the state of ether's awakening, other functions can develop. Mysteries of science. Fused with the Neurotech chip, ether has been connected to your veins and internal organs. Internal strengthening increases physical stats by 1.4 points. Battle sense. Ether can support you in battle. Mechanical movement. Can concentrate your body's kinetic energy to desired parts of your body. Underscore. While I was tracking Jin Sayuk, I was able to experience firsthand the benefits of the new ether. It sure is amazing. The new ether had completely changed my body's mechanism. I felt the change when I sniped Jin Sayuk from a distance. As common sense would show, humans were incapable of shooting a target from three kilometers away. The same applied to superhumans in this world. This was precisely why archers used magic arrows which had almost zero air resistance. However, I was able to hit such a far away target with a physical arrow. This couldn't be explained with just a gift. Having to see the target was one thing, but to shoot an arrow that far, one's bowstring also had to be strong enough. If a bowstring was strong, the strength needed to pull the arrow also increased drastically. That was why such a shot was normally impossible without the help of stigma. But after ether fused with the Neurotech chip which was connected to my body, my body moved like a machine when I was pulling on the bowstring. With mechanical movement, I was able to display power that surpassed what I could display alone. At the same time, I could feel that an invisible force was helping me move. By the way, can I take this with me when I return to Earth? I asked the system. Yes. A few special items acquired inside the tower can be brought to the outside world. Tip. The same applies to the mysterious pouch in your inventory. Thanks. That's good to know. With this, my strength was greatly enhanced. Let's worry about the outside world later and focus on clearing the eighth floor. I surveyed the surrounding area and muttered quietly, Summon. In an instant, a black clump of light descended from the sky. This acted as a portal that transported a black horse to this floor. PRRR. Sanyuri snorted unhappily as she was wet with warm water. You were taking a bath, PRR. She narrowed her eyes and nodded. Sorry, but there's something for you to do right now. I took out special pieces of armor that I made for her to wear. They were also made with dark ore and each piece easily reached level 5. Click, click. Chest. Back head. Soon, most of her body became covered in armor. I even fed her body strengthening medicine just in case. All done. How is it? P-R-R-R, P-R-R-R. She seemed to like it as her eyes arced to a smile. Nuri, this field stretches for about 200 kilometers. This floor was fairly simple. We just had to travel through the field and reach the end. Of course, that didn't mean it was easy. The world looked bright and beautiful from the starting line I was standing on, but the moment I took a step forward, the earth should turn black, the sky should turn red, and unimaginably powerful blasts of magic power should rain down on me. However, I believed in Sanuri. You think you can do it? P -r 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 -r. As expected, 
Sanyuri was full of confidence. Before setting out, there was one last thing I had to do. I took out their special skill acquisition book, level 4 algorithm, from my inventory. Use. I learned the special skill without hesitation. Since I just experienced Tether's power firsthand, this skill was worth the investment. With this single skill, Ether would reach a whole new level of power. You acquire level 4 algorithm. Level 4 algorithm. Equipment you wield will become stronger and more precise. You can now set or change your body's physical response algorithm. Algorithm set. Ether. Automatic defense. Ether is connected to your body. Ether will now defend against hostile attacks on its own. Algorithm set. Ether. Skilled delegation. Extraction and permanent materialization. Ether has been delegated a skill. From now, Ether should cleverly protect me from any attacks coming my way. As for its power, I could start testing it now. I jumped on San Nuri. Nuri, run to the end of this world. PRRRR. She responded enthusiastically. Since she was so confident, I wasn't worried either. I pulled on her rein. Hi Ying. San Yuri shot forward like the wind stepping into the field. At the same time, the scenery changed, and arrows began to rain down on us from the distance. Sanyuri zigzagged masterfully, and Ether blocked any attacks that Sanyuri couldn't avoid. Sanyuri reacted to my spirited shout. At the same time, magic cannon shells shot up from the horizon. Their goal was to blow up the ground to force me to stop. This time, Ether reacted first, using, extraction and permanent materialization. Ether crystallized the magic cannon shells before they touched the ground. The explosives were no longer a threat, and Sanyuri charged forward without hindrance. Meanwhile, I stared into the horizon at the ones firing arrows and magic. Wait a minute. Suddenly, I felt a bit drowsy. Strength left my body, saliva leaked out from my mouth, and the world spun. Apostrophe why is there an illusion circle there? The moment I laid my eyes on the illusion circle in the distance, my mind fell into chaos. Ugh. Normally, I wouldn't have fallen for such a thing so easily. However, my thousand mile eyes could see the illusion circle clearer than anyone else, and when the circle entered my eyes, my body stopped. I had to drink a potion to cure myself, but I couldn't remember which one I needed. My head turned blank. I leaned against Sanyuri's back. Thankfully, Ether's automatic defense was still working, and Sanyuri was unhurt. As such, I could only trust in them for now, that they would protect me until I woke up. Level 8 Chameleon Troops Hideout Prestige's players thought this building belonged to a rich NPC. Naturally, it was the best looking building outside of Medea's palace. Currently, a discussion was being held regarding the rest day suggested by the tower's main guilds. Are you also returning? Boss asked Jain. Yep ah, uh, by the way, take a look at this. Boss. Jine took out a small box as she grinned ear to ear. The box was filled with shiny jewels. What are these? Jewels I can take out of the tower. Items that could be taken to earth. Such items were called effective goods and were sold for a high price. Most effective goods were ores or gemstones. Jine had bought gemstones from the auction house and turned them into jewels. What are they good for? I'm going to keep a few of them for viewing only and turn the rest into necklaces and other accessories. Ask Harjin to do that for you. Harjin's craftsmanship was far superior to most artisans. Ah, good idea. Rather than that, Where's Jai Yong and Jin Yuan? Kiaok Jun Jai Yong is training his special skill right now. Secret March, I think it was called. Jin Yuan's been having fun training a basic skill too, so I don't think either of them are leaving. Boss nodded. Then, she thought about her position for a moment before looking at her messenger. Extra 7. Boss, when you get to the 7th floor, don't skimp out and buy the 5000 TP chip. You can go to the bank there and tell them my name. I left a currency called cash for you, so you'll be able to buy the 8th floor ticket immediately. Tap, tap. While boss was typing up a response with her inexperienced fingers, Spartan's eyes suddenly shot open. P.E.E. Kayak Jine jumped at Spartan's sudden shriek and fell on her butt. However, Spartan's rampage didn't stop. Peek, peek. What's going on? What's wrong with him? Peek. Taken aback, Jine blocked her ears and tried to drown out the sound. On the other hand, Boss calmly examined Spartan. Peek, peek. Not only was Spartan shrieking, 
but he was also pulling on her clothes. He seemed to want to take her somewhere. What? Then suddenly, Boss was struck with a bad feeling. She quickly opened her friend list and looked for extra sevens location. Current location dash. F. Question marks. It meant he was at least on the seventh floor. Spartan seemed to be going crazy because he had lost his connection to his master. Don't tell me. The small ripple in Boss heart quickly grew bigger. Jine, wait for me here. What? Why? What happened? Boss didn't reply. She put on the most serious expression she'd had in three years and tore up the ticket to the seventh floor. 6F. Splendor. Magic power undulated like falling cherry blossom petals. A long sword transformed into several blades, stabbing a black bear. Neck, stomach, arm, leg the parts of the body touched by the long sword immediately froze cold. The bear's injury would have easily been critical for a human. Q -u -u. Even so, there. Level 6 gem black bear, moved. It brandished its claw to wound its opponent. Glang, a long sword clashed with its claw. On the moment of impact, the magic power condensed around the long sword exploded once again. Quang, the explosion swept the black bear's face, putting an end to the fight. Who, immediately afterwards, Che Nayun wiped off her sweat with a sigh. A mountain sized bear promptly fell next to her. A one on one victory. The monster she had been chasing for two days had finally been killed. Speed of growth was indeed unimaginably fast inside the tower. Che Nayun turned back without much thought when a system window popped up. Pick up the items, will you? Che Nayun turned around, hearing the system message. Indeed, an item list was projected above the bear's corpse. Oh, right thanks. She thanked the system and put the items into her inventory. Underscore. Level 5 Invitation Letter to the Love Room. Summoning. You can summon a chosen player to your location. Note. You cannot be in a battlefield when using this item. Level 3 Infinitely Multiplying Origami Letter. Level 3 Delivery of Feelings. You can send a letter to a player whenever you wish. Level 6 Gem Black Bear's Gallbladder. Level 5 Medicine. Eating this will probably increase your stats. Underscore. Consumable items that randomly dropped from monsters such as their heart piercing magnifying glass and card of fate often had amazing and mystical effects. Are any of these good? At least for Che Nayun, the item drops this time didn't seem all that useful. She didn't want to summon anyone, and she didn't want to send any letters either. Guess I'll sell everything other than the gallbladder. When she was about to take her leave, she was struck with a sudden flash of insight. Rather, she remembered the reason she entered the Tower of Wish in the first place. Che Ne Yun looked at their invitation letter to the love room. You can summon a chosen player to your location. Its description made her think of only one person. After staring at the item with trembling eyes, she clenched her teeth with a light sigh. I don't know his nickname anyways. Faulting her stupidity, Che Ne Yun began to walk back to her companions. She left the Dark King mountain range and headed towards the hot spring of peace. Soon, she discovered Yi Jun and Kim Soho who were busily chatting by the hot spring. She was about to call out to them when she overheard their conversation and quickly hid herself. Really? Kim Soho had a surprised expression. Next to him, Yi Jun was making a mischievous face. Yeah really? Wow ha ha. Kim Soho then returned an astonished laugh. What are they talking about? Che Ne Yun wondered. However, the words that followed prevented her from speaking out. Ha Jin really came to see Che Ne Yun? Ah. Quiet. Keep your voice down. It's still a secret. I opened my eyes. To my surprise, I was looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. It was okay that the ceiling was unfamiliar. But why was there a ceiling on floor 8 1? Question mark. And why was I lying down on such a comfy surface? Looking around, I realized that I was on a bed. There was even a blanket over me. Where am I? There isn't a system alert so I couldn't have died. You're awake. At that moment, a low, scary voice rang out. I glanced towards the direction of the voice. A muscular man was standing by a door. Who are you? If it were up to me, I would have let an outsider like you die outside, but the man began to mumble about something that had nothing to do with my question. This guy he was a proper NPC. Consider yourself lucky. The Iron Blood Duchess wished to keep you alive. Iron Blood Duchess? I asked with genuine curiosity. Who the hell was that? Right. Uh, who's or rather, 
where am I? This is the Creven frontier, question mark. I fell into greater confusion, Creven, that was the name of the second residential area, a civilized world with magic and science. Furthermore, the world's end bridge I needed to protect was also located at the eastern end of this residential area. How is your body? The NPC suddenly asked how I was doing, before replying. I checked the NPC's information fist. Level 8 Royal Guard. Ah, yes, I am fine. Then get up. Iron Blood Duchess wishes to see you. Yes, sir. I got up without much thought. Since I was unhurt, I wanted to satiate my curiosity first, finding out how I came here and about this Iron Blood Duchess. Oh right. When I came out to the hallway, I suddenly remembered about Bucephalus. She was most likely 80% of the reason I was alive. Where's my horse? In the stables. Is she getting along? No. All the other horses were kicked out by her. She's quite a violent one. She's galloping around the front lawn right now. Qum, sorry. Considering her personality, I wouldn't have believed him if he said she was getting along with common horses. Only a horse on a similar level like red hair should meet her eyes. In any case, I followed the NPC and walked forward. But even after walking for several minutes and opening door after door, no end came to sight. Was I in a maze, or was this a prison? After passing through dozens of doors, I finally arrived at a giant door. It is my honor. The NPC guiding me greeted the two knights guarding the door. Level 12 Moonlight Knight. The two knights in full plate males likely nodded in response. You may leave. Yes. The NPC backed off respectfully. After he left through the door, the knights grabbed the doorknob. The Iron Blood Duchess wishes to. Jeez. Just let him in already. Before the knights could carry out the formalities, an annoyed voice rang out from the other side of the door. The knights coughed awkwardly, then opened the door. You may go in. I walked through the door. Despite the flamboyant decorations on my way, here, the reception room was rather informal and empty. In the center of the room was a long wooden table, and a person was sitting at its head. Higher. When she spoke, my mind blanked for a moment. Eh? I couldn't think of anything as though the neurons in my brain were malfunctioning. Where's your reply? Eh? Slightly brown skin, athletic figure, and a beautiful foreign look. The woman sitting in front of me was unfamiliar yet all too familiar. Hey, I'm he he, the iron blood he he, iron blood duchess. I stood dumbstruck in front of the woman who introduced herself as the iron blood duchess. How was she here? She was someone who shouldn't be here. As my head spun with countless questions, she continued. Don't tell me you forgot about me. I didn't reply. I couldn't. I was incapable of understanding what was going on. We went to the same school together. The questions filling up my mind all boiled down to a single one. How was she here? Chapter 197. A not so restful rest day. 283 F. Creven Mainland. Iron Blood Duchess Mansion. Follow me. The Iron Blood Duchess led me to her office without any further explanation, unaware of how confused I was. I absent mindedly followed her. I tried hard to piece together what was happening inside my head but failed, so I took a peek at the smartwatch as a last resort. No new message. Recently, the smartwatch had stopped warning me about changes like this. It was probably because I changed the present too much. Hee <laughs> hee. You have a funny face. Were you that surprised? I was in her office now. The Iron Blood Duchess offered me a seat in front of her and smiled at me, who was still puzzled. Stop joking around. Seriously? Tell me how you're here. Should I explain that first? Yes. Please. She finally began to explain why and how she came to be here. As her explanation continued, my expression became more and more dumbfounded. The gap between my upper and lower lips widened and my jaw dropped as if it were about to touch the floor. However, I soon realized that just because things didn't align with my novel, it didn't mean that they were impossible. But still, the first question that came out of me was an unconditioned response. What? An invitation? My question harbored both confusion and astonishment. Unlike me, who was still bewildered, the Iron Blood Duchess just nodded casually, yeah, you came in with an entrance ticket, right? I stared at her who had a perfectly calm expression, Creven's Iron Blood Duchess, Kim Hajin's past classmate, the villain that I created and converted to good, Toma, 
had once again appeared in the main story after a dynamic turn of events. Was the co-author determined to give a main supporting cast an important role? What exactly is the invitation? An invitation is an invitation, just like the word says. It invited me to the tower. This was what had happened to Toma according to her. About four years ago, shortly after dropping out of Cube, she joined a group of mercenaries. She planned to transfer and become a hero after gaining some real-life experience. By a strange twist of fate, the mercenaries discovered an underground dungeon that winter. Although it was illegal to conquer an unregistered dungeon, the mercenaries decided to proceed in an attempt to evade taxes. Toma, their best soldier, naturally participated in the mission. With Toma's help, the mercenaries successfully conquered the dungeon. But with Toma being Toma, she met an unfortunate end. The mercenaries had convinced her to take a break and then left her inside the dungeon. They then ran away after sealing the entrance. Toma woke up from her nap and realized that they had betrayed her. She searched for an exit with her life on the line and ended up discovering the invitation. What did it look like? There must have been some words written on it. What did it say? Toma shook her head. It was just an invitation. You are invited to the land of fantasy something like that. I assumed anywhere would be better than the damp, soggy dungeon. So I tore the ticket right away. Did anyone else receive an invitation? Probably a dozen or so. A dozen? I panicked. It meant that there were at least a dozen people who existed outside the setting. Yeah, but no one is as important as me. At least not on the eighth floor. That was good to hear. I breathed a sigh of relief. If you entered through the invitation, does that mean you started on the eighth floor? That's right. Toma grinned mischievously. I examined her for a moment. Her appearance had changed a lot since the last time I saw her. After overcoming her trauma, she had obviously lived a good life. Her face was rounder and so were her eyes. She used to be a sharp-looking, voluptuous Latino but now she looked more soft and Asian-like. Also, what's up with the Iron Blood Duchess title? That's my nickname, I guess. I trained hard as soon as I arrived here. Unlike you guys, I have something called a level system. I can get much stronger by leveling up. So I trained a bit and voila, I'm stronger, just like that. Toma cheerfully continued. And there are battles here all the time. Monsters come pouring in every month while fighting them. I made a name of myself in no time. I'm already at level 35. 35? Yeah, and I'm also super rich. I even got a title, and that's how I'm posing as a noble here. What do you think? Cool, right? I had no choice but to admit that she was strong since Minotaur, one of the stronger calamities waiting on the ninth floor was level 40, so you can take it easy here. I'll show you how reliable I am. I'll pay you back 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times for what I owe. Toma smacked her chest and bursted. That's right, she owed me money. Couple hundreds of millions, I think. I'd been making so much money lately that I forgot. So, thanks to you I skipped floor 8 too? Yep. Oh, but if you want to go down there, that's fine too. If you'd like to train there, that is. After making it to the end of Field of Trials, a player could go to the 8-2 floor, Creven's temporary fortress. It was a city-sized fortress, and players had to clear special tests and quests to receive enough performance points to reach the 8-3 floor. No, I don't really need to. But I declined. Fighting was a good training method but only for those with potential. I couldn't get stronger through normal means since I was already at the limit of my innate talent. Why? because you're already at the top, question mark. Toma grinned as if she knew something. I'm pretty close with the administrators. I'm like their right arm, so I know a thing or two about secrets. Really? Yup. Who would have thought you would actually take all that money from Medea? I stood up silently, approached the window behind Toma's seat and stared beyond it. A full view of Creven was before my eyes. Shops were lined up beside neat sidewalks. They were bigger than a house but smaller than a building. They looked nothing like those of the modern times but didn't have any similarity to those of the Middle Ages either. A new world in a category of its own, populated by thousands of people. Are we on the west side? Yeah, northwest, to be exact. In the original novel, 
Crevon was divided into three districts with a river in the middle. First, the south and the north. They were both residential areas similar in size to Jiongido, but the most important district was the east, a narrow plot of land between the south and the north. The east, also called the world's end, was off limits to NPCs. At the very end of the world's end lay the world's end bridge serving as Crevon's final border. Here, have this first. As I was looking at the view of Crevon, Toma handed me something. Underscore. VIP identification. You are now a guest of, level 15 Duchess Mansion. Underscore. On the surface, Toma's mansion was much higher level than Medea's palace. In truth, considering its architectural value, Medea's palace was sophisticated enough that even a level 30 palace would be a downgrade. The only reason its level was set so low was because of its geographic location. Prestige. Toma continued. Stay here for the time being. You have other companions, right? Yeah. Then I'll look after them, too. Oh. I smiled happily. In truth, most players had to struggle a lot inside Creven due to inflation. Think about how the cheapest product at the upgrade center on the seventh floor was worth 15,000 TP. Here, where the level of civilization was similar to that of the 21st century and even better in some aspects. The value of TP was significantly lower. In that sense, Toma's words couldn't be more dependable. Trust me, there are loads of fun events here, I'll show you later. In exchange for the inflation problem, Creven had a number of huge events where players could make TP. The Coliseum, Virtual Reality Game Tournament, Monster Hunt, and Dance Competition, to name a few. However, since there were no common quests, after hunting a monster, players had to dismantle it and sell and negotiate the price all on their own. Unlike on Earth, there were no agencies that helped them with it. How's the weather right now? Is it cold? I asked, looking down at the street with patches of snow here and there. It seems to have snowed recently. Yeah? It's probably around minus 23 degrees 1, right now. There are four seasons here just like in Korea, but they tend to be a bit more extreme. Yeah? And how much are the buildings here? This time, the system informed me. Driven, due to its dense population and limited residential areas, does not offer the hideout system. You guys can't buy buildings here. It's overcrowded, so we decided not to sell any to outsiders. Question mark. Once again, this was out of line with the original story. Really? Yeah? One day, after getting a revelation about outsiders coming in, the administrator's subordinates proposed a legislation about it. The revelation happened in the original novel as well, but the legislation was new, I sighed. But the most important thing, the fact that the administrators of this floor were Agamemnon and Moses, hadn't changed, so that was a relief. By the way, how did you know that I was here? Because you were the first player to arrive on the eighth floor. It's been a long time since I saw anyone from Earth, so I went to take a look. And you were there. I hardly recognized you at first because your face was so different. Did you get a plastic surgery or something? Number. It became more handsome on its own. Toma frowned instantly. I'm kidding. I didn't have any surgery. I guess I just lost my baby fat as I got older. I don't think that's it. Anyway, do you know how to go up? Yeah? I nodded without hesitation. Oh, really? How did you know? I have a way. Since we were on the subject of going up, I fixed my gaze again on Toma. I want to ask you one more favor. Is that okay? Before I could even say what the favor was, Toma grinned. It doesn't have to be just one. Thanks to you, my dad. Q um. Whatever, continue. I'll do anything my dad's friend asks me to do. I felt slightly guilty at her touching words. The fact that I was close to her father had been fabricated. I nodded with a wry smile. Thanks. The thing is, I explained my plans to Toma. Toma thought for a moment and then nodded. That's hardly a favor. Nice. Now, blocking that bridge should be much easier. Thank you. No problem. We shook each other's hands to celebrate our reunion. Suddenly, a stern voice came from the crystal ball in the office. Your Grace, a player is causing a commotion on the 81 floor. 81F field of trials. A woman had destroyed all attacks with a terrifying wave of magic power and reached the end of the field. It took her a mere 15 minutes. At the end of the field was a bulwark, an army of soldiers, 
and a general. They stepped aside with facial expressions that said you have earned our respects and showed her the stairway to the 8 2 floor. The stairway stretched far above into the sky. If she went up the stairway, she would reach the 8 2 floor. But she didn't climb the stairs. Instead, she turned to the general, answer my question. The magic power she emitted was enormous enough to leave marks on the ground. Outsiders are not allowed to ask questions, but Creven's general who stepped up to stop her was not intimidated. In fact, he looked as if he was ready to fight, even more so than her. SSSSSS Magic power that flowed out from his hand engulfed the blade of his sword. It was an aura of sword reinforcement which was stronger than sword chi which every swordsman dreamed of having. I will ask again. The woman spoke up. Her stern voice echoed across the field. Then I shall say it once more. No questions are allowed for outsiders. The general answered. He maintained an upright stance just like that of mountains which didn't bend or waver. Did a man pass by here or was he killed without making it through? Answer. That was all she wanted to know. Of course, she knew that death in the tower wasn't a permanent death. Still, she believed she had a duty to avenge the death of her subordinates. Questions are not allowed. Take the stairway or step back into the field again. Those two are your only options. Their conversation did not last long. It was only natural that stones and trees could not communicate with each other. A question left unanswered could only be addressed through violence. The woman emitted black magic power. Soon, her eyes turned red. In turn, the general's eyes glowed with determination. They were about to fly at each other when there was a soft whisper, boss. She recognized the voice right away. The woman called boss stopped and turned to where the whisper had come from. Stop, Sirkfer. And the general stopped after hearing the next voice. The general, Kfer, stared at his comrade. The tension between the two melted away like snow. I arrived in Crevon mainland, the 8-3 floor, with boss. Walking in the unfamiliar streets of Crevon, we held a conversation. Who oh oh oh. Boss, walking next to me, was just like a child. She seemed curious about everything here. It was no wonder, since there was a horde of airships up in the sky and occasionally, beautiful magic would decorate the sidewalks. Strangely, horses were still the means of transportation. Hey boss, why did you try to fight Kfer? Ah, I would have won. Geez, it was really touching that she came all the way here to save me but her confidence had to be discouraged. Her opponent, Kfer, was a legendary flowering knight too, from history. Although he was inferior to Kyauk Jun Jiyong, boss shouldn't be sure of her victory until at least 70% of her abilities were restored. Are you doubting me? Boss narrowed her eyes at me. Of course you would win in a regular one-on-one -on -one match, but you haven't learned any skills yet. Boss must be the only player without any skills at this point. Learn what I recommend you later. Don't be so picky. Actually, find the skills you want to learn by yourself. That's not how you should talk to your bow. I casually interrupted her. By the way, how did you come here? You, ha. Huh? Boss looked as if she wanted to say something but didn't and simply let out a sigh. I didn't know why. But I felt like recently boss was giving in to me. Spartan helped me. Ah did you worry about me? I looked at Spartan who was sitting on boss shoulder and smiled. That's not it. Boss waved her hand all in a fluster and suddenly looked up at the sky. Look at the sky. I've never seen an airship like that in my entire life. Ah, really? Boo -oo. Together, we watched magical airships with video screens on the side fly through the sky. Then suddenly, a system alert popped up. Level 4 black suit, J Green Order has been successfully auctioned off. It was a message about the armor I used to wear. I was about to check who the buyer was but stopped at boss words. This floor seems much better than the third floor. Well, on the outside, yes. The brighter the light, the darker the shadow. As I mentioned earlier, most players would probably have a harder time here than in Prestige. In fact, Prestige wasn't that bad of a place nowadays. It was full of potential as it was actively under development. Thanks to the work I put into improving Prestige, many ordinary people were living there now. They were artisans and manufacturers who couldn't obtain performance points because they couldn't hunt monsters. In the original novel, they would have been driven to despair and forced to scrape up 1000 TP to leave the Tower of Wish, but now there was hope for them as well. Albeit slowly, ordinary people were also starting to get their hands on skill books, 
and with the news about people being able to bring acquired skills to earth spreading, they should be motivated enough to continue to develop prestige on their own. But will you be okay? Suddenly, boss said worriedly, what are you talking about? If you continue to climb at this pace, people might find out you're the seat of black. I smiled wryly at her words. Extra 7 Black Lotus. It was a reasonable suspicion. Extra 7 achieved first place in the highest difficulty tutorial, and Black Lotus was climbing at a speedy pace. With that in mind, I changed my ID to a different one on the Game Center rankings, but someone was still bound to be suspicious. Don't worry about it. Rather than that, I put a hat that I had made beforehand on Boss. Underscore. Level 4 hat made by Kim Harjin. Level 4 heat preservation. Level 4 looks good. Underscore. It looked like a beanie, but it had a ball of cotton on the tip like a Santa hat. It's a present since it's Christmas soon. Boss suddenly stopped walking. She blinked blankly for a few seconds and then tilted her head to look at herself in the window of a shop. There was definitely a smile on her face, but only briefly. In the next moment, she clenched her teeth. She obviously looked as if she was having complicated thoughts. For a moment, I wondered if I had done something wrong. But boss faked a smile again and looked at me. Thank you. She sounded as if there was a lump in her throat. Boss. Did you do some eth? Beep. I received a message. Hold on a second. Captain Britain. I'll be heading home now. Harjin said it was from Rachel, I replied quickly, me too, I'll see you on earth, with that, I asked boss, should we head back to earth now, it looks like today's the start of the rest day, it should take at least a week for Toma to create the system I asked for and for other players to reach the 8-3 floor, that should be enough time for me to enjoy a short vacation, ok, great, then let's, no wait, you stay here, boss. I remembered suddenly. Now wasn't the time for this. I stopped boss from buying the return ticket. What? I handed the VIP certificate to boss who was frowning. Take this and go to Tom. I mean, the Duchess and decide which skills you're going to acquire. She should have lots of skill books with her. You need to choose at least one before I get back. It's homework, okay? What? Who in the world gives homework to his boss? It's all because you're too difficult. Come. Spartan. I called in Spartan, who had been sitting on boss's shoulder all this time. He headed my way reluctantly. I'll be off then. I'm gonna do a homework check when I get back, so don't slack off. Dumbfounded, boss was at a loss for words and looked at me with blank eyes. Let's go, Spartan. To Earth. Pa'uru. Meanwhile, Spartan used his authority. The passage of light. A circle of light came down from the sky and surrounded me and Spartan. In it, the strange sense of returning to Earth enveloped my entire body. 1. In case and wasn't obvious, temperature is in Celsius. Chapter 198. A not so restful rest day. 3. In prestige, where the difference between day and night was unclear, the flow of time was still identifiable even without the help from the magnificent invention called the clock by the virtue of the moon-like mass up in the sky. When this mass sprinkled fragments of light on prestige, it was daytime. But these white particles of light only signified half of a whole day. Currently, the particles were shining faintly from beneath the western horizon, so it had to be dawn. Ha! Huh. To chain a yun who hadn't slept a wink since yesterday. The dawn was rather long. She was on the third floor in essence of the straits hideout, lying on a bed in a room full of other guild members. She was deep in thought rather than asleep. She kept thinking about the accursed words she had heard the day before in splendor. Hajin really came to see Che Neyun? Ah, hey, quiet. Keep your voice down. That's still a secret. When? A while ago. When Neyun was cursed by a banshee. The moment she heard those words she clenched her teeth. I shouldn't have trusted anyone. The ashes lying deep inside her heart had once again lit up. But at the same time, Che Yun realized that this wasn't a big deal, at least to them. Ah no surprises there. Hajin isn't the type to stay still after hearing about that. So, what happened? Well, I really shouldn't talk. Anyways, that's why I'm wondering is it true that they used to date? Yi Jun incited Kim Soho to speak more to Liu or something out of him, to simply satisfy her curiosity. I don't know exactly. Ask Nei Yun or Hajin directly later. 
Come on then what was the point in me telling you all that? Che Na Yun didn't have the guts to call her out and complain. After that incident, she was confident that she had become more audacious, yet, at that moment, all she could do was stay hidden in the shadows and listen in on them. Plus, she felt it would be strange for her to get angry when she was the one eavesdropping on them. Che Na Yun joined them a while later pretending not to have heard anything. She tried to act normal in vain and returned to the hideout after a day of training. She then handed the prizes to Kim Young Jin. The contract was that she would yield everything she earned in the tower to them. Although Yu Yi Anna said that wasn't necessary, Che Na Yun did so anyways. Contrary to Che Na Yun's expectation, Kim Young Jin took a liking to the level 3 infinitely multiplying origami letter. He praised Che Na Yun in front of other guild members saying that he now had a way to communicate even when the messenger was dead. When he put it like that, it did seem like a good item. She blamed herself for not being able to come up with a use. In any case, as a reward, she was allowed to keep the remaining items to herself. That was six hours ago. For six hours, Che Na Yun had trouble sleeping. Thoughts and anxiety drove off her sleep. According to Yi Jun, Kim Ha Jin had come to see her when she was unconscious and hovering between life and death. She tried hard not to think about why, because the image of him looking down on her in pity filled her with disgust and anger. Instead, she turned her train of thought to Extra 7, the one who gave her the antidote, an old acquaintance since her days at Cube. There was something suspicious about what Yi Jun said. If what she said was true, then Yi Jun met both Kim Ha Jin and Extra 7 around the same time. Of course, Kim Ha Jin and Extra 7 should be separate individuals, but apostrophe wait. Che Na Yun's eyes turned cold. Maybe that's not necessarily the case. Her gut feeling was that there was some kind of a relationship between the two. This feeling was far from logical but intense like a sixth sense. Kyuum. Then a noise came from the next room. It was the sound of Kim Young Jin, the most diligent and punctual member, waking up. Che Na Yun, sick and tired of her circling thoughts, also got up. ZZZ. Yi Jun was sleeping in the adjacent bed. Che Na Yun stood silently and stared down at her, deep in sleep and drooling. I couldn't sleep at all because of you what is it that you know? Che Na Yun stared at Yi Jun with cold eyes and then stopped abruptly. The halt turned into a small propulsion which rushed to Yi Jun's cheek. Slap. ARGH. The sharp pain woke Yi Jun up. Although her consciousness was blurry, the pain was vivid. Her eyes filled with tears automatically as she grabbed her cheek and looked up at Che Na Yun. What? A mosquito. A huge mosquito. You okay? Che Na Yun showed her hands. There was indeed a mosquito crushed to death. Still, I'd hurt a, a lot. It hurt. Sorry. Che Na Yun had hit her as weakly as possible but Yi Jun still whimpered. Tears were about to flow from her eyes. All right. Get up. Let's go training. But Che Na Yun grabbed her wrist and pulled her up by force. Wait, Na Yun, I was gonna go home during the rest day. Oh WW, you can't. Why do you I think I taught you how to get to the sixth floor. Today, you're gonna train with me till death. Let's get stronger together. Kim Soho is waiting for us. Wait, wait. It hurts. My wrist. Wrist. It's gonna break. Ack. It has been more than 100 days since you first entered the tower. You can now acquire one skill outside the tower semi-permanently. Special skill. Level 4 algorithm. Be careful. For death will rob you of your skill. System messages appeared beneath my eyelids. When I finished reading them and opened my eyes, I was already back on earth. I was in the chameleon troops hideout that I had personally reconstructed. Although today was a rest day, Jain and I were the only returnees. The huge lobby only contained goblins who were busy cleaning. Oh so it's true that you can bring a skill outside. Oh, by the way, you have a mission. Harjin. A mission? I was about to call Khalifa but stopped and tilted my head to one side. Yeah? Boss told me to give you one. I'm gonna go back to Hieronimo and fetch it, so get ready in the meantime. Jain said and handed me a jewel box. And, this. What's this? Effective goods. They're valuable jewels. Can you turn them into rings or necklaces or something like that? I looked inside. There were jewels considered valuable even with current technological advancements like blood diamonds and black opals, 
and jewels found only inside the tower like ice light stones and fire silver stones. When did you get your hands on these? They were all super expensive, he <laughs> he, there's a reason I call myself the phantom thief. So, can you? I can, but what about the cost? I'm pretty expensive. Young dwarf's dexterity combined with ether which had become one with me. The precision of a machine and delicacy of a human had come together on my hands making my craftsmanship surpass the modern era. Five, five percent? Jain said with a trembling voice, there's about twenty of them. I'll take four. Ah, she grabbed my wrist with a single cry. But you, you, you're rich. I can't buy things like these with money. How about just three, then? Effective goods could only be obtained through monster hunting and quests. Though, in this case, Jain seems to have stolen some from here and there. Fine. 3. Jain nodded reluctantly. But you have to do a good job. Don't worry about that. After I said goodbye to Jain, I hurried home to see her, who was both my friend and family. However, no one was home. It's only evening, so she's probably with her friends from the next block. With that in mind, I headed to Yun Xia's house. Terriring, when I rang the doorbell, the speaker turned on. Who is it? It's me. Oh, Harjin? A, who? Harjin Harjin? As expected, Ivandal's noisy voice came from behind the door. I smiled and waited for Yansia to open the door. Welcome, Harjin. Ivandal ran to me as soon as the door opened. Tata Tata. She came to me in loud footsteps and hugged me right away. I picked her up as Ivandal clung to me like a cicada. Hajin. Long time no see. I felt warmth when I stepped into the house with Ivandal. Hyeon's parents were not home, for some reason. They were always busy when I was here. But Yun Xia, Hyon, and another friend of Ivendal were there. Good timing. We were just getting ready for dinner. Yun Xia mentioned. I glanced at the kitchen and smiled. Luckily, the ingredients were out but the cooking hadn't started. Hajin were you in the tower? Ivendal asked as she rubbed her cheeks against me in my arms. Yeah? So you know about the tower now? I learned about it on TV and YouTube. Aha. Uh -huh. Two kids and Hyang approached me as I held Ivendal in my arms. The taller was Hyeon and the shorter was Jin, I think. Hello. Hello. Yeah? Hi. I patted them on their heads lightly and put Ivendal down. Then? I headed to the kitchen. It looked like today's menu was tomahawk steak. Can you wait a little bit? I'll start cooking. I'll do it. With a smile, I picked up the knife that Yun Sun Ah was about to grab and sent her back. Two hours later, Yun Sun Ah called my cooking skills fantastic. The kids were also very satisfied. They lay sprawled near the sofa due to languor after meal. But Ivendal was a little different. While her friends were half asleep from eating until they were full. She watched TV and suddenly widened her eyes. I also looked at the TV. The TV show was about a festival in England which would take place during Christmas. Ivendal says she wants to visit England. Huh? England? Yes. I took her with me when I went to Paris for work. It looks like she's taken an interest in traveling abroad since then. Ivendal kneeled in front of the TV and watched it with sparkling eyes. England. I guess she recognizes her home instinctively, though. I'm not sure home is the right word. Beep. I received a message and checked my smartwatch. The sender was Hieronimo. It was Jain. Harjin. This time, your mission as Fenrir is in England. You like England, so no problem there, right? I smiled as soon as I read it. Perfect timing. Well then, we'll just have to go. Mid-December. Fenrir's gun was fired for the first time in nearly half a year. England's Merseyside County was practically carpet bombed by a ferocious wolf. The power of each bullet exceeded that of a cannonball, yet the wolf's aim was as precise as ever. There, he destroyed the homes of sea monsters as easily as cutting through tofu. As usual, there were no civilian casualties or any loss of property. Other experts of the field clicked their tongues at his meticulous skill. The monsters were removed neatly as if they had been cut out using a scalpel. Fenra let the world know that he came back from the Tower of Wish stronger than ever. Thank you for taking on the mission. Rachel called Fenra both as the Princess of England and as the representative of the English Royal Court Guild. Apparently there was a subjugation mission planned out but it was delayed in order to minimize the damage to the nearby city. Sea monsters were able to cause tsunamis, but they only did so when they were enraged since tsunamis could destroy their homes as well. However, 
Fenra didn't even give them the time to get enraged. Mechanical shooting. Error-free destruction. From the start to the end, it took him only about 15 minutes to destroy their homes completely. He beat his old record. Just like Rachel, Kim Hajin had also gotten stronger in the Tower of Wish. That's what partners are for. More than that, you should be careful. England isn't as safe as the tower. You don't have to worry. I learned a good skill. Inside the limousine heading to the English Royal Court Guild, Rachel looked out the window as she talked on the phone and discovered someone. That someone was talking on the phone just as she was. He had sunglasses on but his silhouette was similar to that of Kim Hajin. She had run into the person she was speaking to on the phone by chance. What a coincidence. She was about to roll down the window happily when she spotted something and froze. Kim Hajin was holding hands with a child who had her blonde hair neatly tied in a ponytail. Question mark. The limousine passed by them and a familiar face was reflected in Rachel's eyes. Rachel was startled. The girl smiling next to him. The girl skipping down the street happily with one hand in Kim Hajin's hand and another hand holding an ice cream. She was also wearing a cute bunny hat. She was undoubtedly the girl that Rachel had seen four years ago through what she called future premonition. The limousine soon turned a corner and the two disappeared from her view. Wait, stop. Rachel shouted to the driver in a hurry. Key ick. The limousine stopped with a skidding sound. Huh? Stop. Kim Hajin's voice rang out from her watch as Rachel got off the car. She had just seen something and was sure that she wasn't mistaken. She hurried back towards the direction that the car had just passed by. She turned the corner, to where Kim Hajin was. Stop what? Rachel said. Stop what? Rachel said. Rachel found Kim Hajin in an unfrequented alley. He was still Kim Hajin even with sunglasses on. She didn't have to check that the man in front of her was Kim Hajin because his voice matched the voice that came out of her smartwatch. However, the thing next to him was not a girl, arf arf, but a puppy, a cute Pomeranian. The puppy ran towards Rachel, her golden fur fluttering in air. Kim Hajin turned around to follow her. Hey! Where are you go, huh? Rachel said. Kim Hajin's eyes widened and Rachel nodded at him. I passed by you in a car. So I came running. That's all Rachel could say. I see. It's nice to see you. What a coincidence. But Kim Hajin's reaction was quite dull. He didn't seem too surprised. As if he already knew that she would be here. Rachel expressed her suspicion through a different question. Excuse me. Hajin said, but weren't you with someone just now? With who? A child. A girl about this tall. A child? But all Kim Hajin did was tilt his head to one side casually. Um, was it all in my head? Or did I mistake him for someone else? Poke, poke. Amidst Rachel's confusion, the puppy pressed her front paws into Rachel's legs. Don't just watch. Hold her. Huh? Oh, okay. Rachel did as he said. Grr. GRR, the cute puppy snuggled in her arms. Her smile was just like that of a human. Rachel patted her head and continued. I thought you left right after the mission. I stayed to watch the festival. Around that time, people were starting to gather near the alley. As the Princess of England, Rachel's popularity was unrivaled in her homeland. She couldn't be simply hanging around on the streets. I think I need to go now. As such. Rachel tried to put the puppy down, Ah, ah! but the puppy didn't want to let go of her, and Kim Hajin had to separate them personally. After removing her by force, he patted the whimpering, sullen puppy softly. Rachel spoke. Your puppy is a lot like a human. Is that so? At that moment, a limousine approached the alley. Kim Hajin smiled wryly. You should get going. It'll be a lot harder when more people get here. I'll come see you later. As the alley that was getting more and more crowded, Rachel nodded. She looked at the puppy in Kim Hajin's arms then smiled softly at her and stepped back. Princess. Oh, my princess. She smiled reluctantly at the people cheering at her and got in the limousine. Then, she looked at Kim Hajin from the window say goodbye. Kim Hajin grabbed the puppy's hand and waved it to say goodbye. It was cute, but Rachel was quite distraught. There was no way she was imagining things, yet imagination was the only explanation for her confusion. Then, I'll start the car. The limousine proceeded smoothly, and Rachel became absorbed in deep thought. Tower of Wish. At 3 p.m. today, 
a huge explosion erupted on the fifth floor's northeast gateway number five. This gateway was under the Guild Alliance's control under the refutable premise that if ordinary people tried to capture it, there would be countless casualties. The Guild Alliance's rule had not been challenged until now. Today, the gateway disappeared without a trace. It crumbled down to nothingness after the explosion. The Guild Alliance hurried to the scene to reveal the identity of the ruffian who had the guts to do something like this on a designated rest day. Um, we think it was Black Lotus. What? Seriously? However, their burden was lightened as they found out that retaliation was impossible to begin with. Yes, there's no doubt about it. His symbol was on the ground and I'm looking at it right now. Beside the crumbled gateway was the symbol of Black Lotus. Ha. Huh. Withdraw, then. How could they stop Aranka from capturing the gateway when he alone possessed power equal to a single guild? Guild Alliance members sighed and turned around. Yes, sir. We'll head back now. Yeah? They turned around feebly. That's done. However, contrary to their expectations, the mastermind behind the attack was not Black Lotus. Rather, it was his superior. The nameless boss. She had impersonated her subordinate for his own sake. No one could imitate Fenra because he used a gun. There was no one else that could display such terrifying power with bullets. However, Black Lotus could be imitated with a bit of effort. Boss decided to nip the suspicion that could become her subordinate's Achilles heel. Currently, there should be lots of media coverage of Fenra's mission on Earth. So even if it was discovered that Kim Hajin was extra seven, he would be Fenra and not Black Lotus. Boss waited until the Guild Alliance members reported the explosion as Black Lotus doing and returned to Creven on the eighth floor. Imitating the arrows of her subordinate was tiring, but she still had the homework from that cocky underling. Boss entered the Iron Blood Duchess study. Soldiers, who had been guarding the study with great intensity, stepped aside like docile puppies in front of her VIP ID. Out of the many books stocked up in the study, she picked out only the skill books. It was harder than she thought. There were way too many books. Boss even banged her fist against the bookshelf out of anger in the middle. But with great perseverance, she finally managed to pick out two skill books. Basic Skill Acquisition Book, Level 0 Magic Power Circulation. Basic Skill Acquisition Book, Level 1 Magic Circuit Remodeling. They were both passive skills regarding magic power. These should be enough thought boss as she turned around question mark she couldn't help but be startled in the next moment someone was standing right in front of her hello a woman had been standing behind her all this time without a hint of presence above her head were the following words level question mark iron blood duchess chapter 199 damned long story one that was close no she was probably still suspecting something. Evendal also became excited after seeing Rachel and for the first time through a huge tantrum. It seemed it was true that blood was thicker than water. In any case, I had to put in two days of effort to appease Evendal. I did my best to lighten up her mood with Clancy Islet's festival, made her a beautiful bracelet using one of the jewels I got from Jine and promised her that I would let her meet Rachel eventually. I wasn't lying. Evendal had to be revealed to the world eventually. Of course, now was still too early. But once I had the power to protect Evendal both emotionally and physically and once Evendal had the power to protect herself, I would reveal her existence to the world. It would be wrong to waste her talent just because I was afraid of something happening to her. In the original story, Evendal had a peerless talent for stronghold defense. That shouldn't have changed in this storyline either. Today was fun, right, Yuan? After our tour of England, we returned to the underground training room I set up for Evendal. Over the years, Evendal had created many spirit animals, which were now flying around the training room. Eagles, wolves, horses, hippos a huge mystical army of animals greeted Evendal. Even at a glance, one could see that there were over a thousand of them. However, Evendal commanded with a single flicker of her hand. Guys clickety-clack. Evendal began to mutter strange onomatopoeias. Squish, squoosh. Her spirits then began to move according to the different sounds she was making. Shiko, Shiko. She waved her arm around like a conductor as she commanded her spirits to dance. Sparkly, sparkly. That one seemed to be an attack command as the army took on an aggressive stance. Then, 
they spread apart and began to charge forward at multiple angles. That's enough, perfect score. Well done, I praised Ivendel and held her up high. Ivendel smiled happily in my arms. If I have my magician's hat and staff, I can command them even better. Oh, really? I made a mental note to upgrade her gear later. I looked around the training room once again. However, I didn't find any special spirits. Um, Ivendel. Where's Fenra? I couldn't find Fenra in the Sea of Monsters, so I asked Ivendel instead. Over there. Ivendel pointed to the corner of the training room. I followed her finger and saw a black wool flying by the wall. He was the only spirit animal that radiated an imposing aura. Little wolf. But when Ivendel called him, he shot his eyes open and quickly ran over with his tongue out. In case it wasn't obvious, I had left Fenra with Ivendel. Since I knew he would be treated as equipment by the tower's system, he got smaller, un- Otherwise, he's too big, I see. I checked Fenra's stats, underscore. Ghost Wolf, Servant, High Intermediate Rank. The first servant created by the witch, Ivendel. Basic stats, Strength 12.150, Bite Force 12.850, Stamina 8.635, Speed 13.950, Perception 13.950, Vitality 8.850, Magic Power 9.950, Underscore. The word absurd didn't even begin to describe him. If I fought him, I would surely be crushed. I wouldn't be surprised if he reached the level of the real Fenra soon. All right, Ivendel, can you play with your friends for a bit? I need to do something on the side. Okay, Ivendel nodded with a cheerful smile. I smiled back and bent my knees in a sitting posture. I didn't have a chair underneath me, so my butt should have hit the ground. However, my butt safely landed on a comfy chair. Ether had moved on its own and transformed into a chair by itself. Sitting on the ether chair, I turned on my smartwatch. Then, I entered Violet Banquet. Welcome, Truth Agency's administrator. There are 77 clients eagerly waiting to hear back from you. As expected, there was a huge backlog of requests. I looked through the list. The ones that caught my attention were requests from Frost Sanctuary. Desolate Moon, and Essence of the Straits you Yena. I can tell you Yena that I operate the Truth Agency right? I pondered as I checked the contents of her request. I hope you are doing well, Truth Agency Nim. I am Ladu. I've contacted you once before for a request. Today's request is something that is purely to satisfy my curiosity. Knowing how busy you must be, I will not take it to heart even if you decline my request. In fact, I hope you do not think I am bothering you with trifling questions. Yu Yi and I had a serious tone. It must be the claws. Respectful and polite speech may make the response quicker. But when I read the main content of her request, is creator's sacred graces Yun Tsia in a romantic relationship with Hieronymo mercenaries Kim Ha Jin? Cough. What? Is she crazy? I was dumbfounded to the point of choking on air. What strange fantasy did she have now? Telling myself to look into it later, I quickly wrote down a reply. They are certainly only neighbors. As this request is too simple, we will not accept any payment. With that, I went back to scrolling down the list. A. Eh? Then suddenly, a certain name shot into my eyes like a nail being hammered in. Hello. I am contacting you as the representative of Dehan's chairman, Che Juchul the Immortal. Aileen returned to Earth for the first time, along with her exit from the Tower of Wish. She felt like she regained the honor and authority she had been missing for a long time. As soon as the news of her return came out, requests for interviews flooded in. After all, among the heroes who entered the Tower of Wish with the first wave of entrance tickets, Aileen was the only individual who was regarded as someone who stood at the peak of her generation. As Aileen enjoyed interviews, she partook in a public press conference proudly. She even made it a huge event on the Tower of Heroes front lawn. Her plan was to lay out her accomplishments and showcase the rewards she got from the Tower. She even made a mental note to have her hand on her waist proudly the whole time. Indeed, Aileen became the main character of the press conference. At least, for the first half, we've been receiving reports that Pandemonium's infamous terrorist, Black Lotus, 
has also entered the tower. This man known as Black Lotus. If there is anything you know about his identity, Sir Vast Expanse has also made a comment about him. We would like to hear Miss Aileen's comment as well. However, their attention quickly turned to another player. Once again, it was Black Lotus. Feeling sour. Aileen responded half-heartedly and sent them away. Although the reporters at this press conference were all seasoned veterans, they were unable to raise any objection in front of Aileen. I'm not Black Lotus, so why are you asking me? That's it for this interview. Please go back. Please go back. With just these three words, the reporters all packed their belongings and got back in their cars. Annie, after the reporters left like cockroaches scurrying away. The only person left was someone that could resist her spirit speech. It was Yan Sun Ah. What? Aileen glanced at her. Yan Sun Ah was holding a plastic bag with tofu inside. Congrats on leaving the tower. Welcome back. Fuf. It's not like I was in jail or anything. 1. Even as she grumbled, she took the tofu from Yan Sun Ah. Anni, are you out of the tower for good or are you going back soon? I'm going back tomorrow. At first, Aileen wanted to make up an excuse and leave the tower halfway through. But after witnessing the mysterious power known as skills and because the scale of the tower made it increasingly more interesting, she decided to climb the tower until the end. Anyways, you're here because you have something to say. Right? Where do you want to go? My house or my office? Aileen asked Yun Sun Ah, intending to show off her skill. Well, I don't really care either way. Okay, then let's go to my office. Aileen grabbed Yun Sun Ah's hand, flustering her as it was something she wouldn't usually do. Why are you grabbing my hand all of a sudden? Aileen didn't respond. Three seconds later, the world flipped 180 degrees and a new scenery warped around them. Aileen and Yun Xia were now in Aileen's office. What? Qu? How is it? That was a skill. As I thought, it's even stronger outside the tower. Aileen was perfectly calm unlike Yun Xia's panicked self. The skill Aileen used was teleport. Unlike Blink, it needed some time before activation, making it tricky to use during the heat of battle but it was able to transport up to two people as well. Of course, there was the downside that it had up more magic power, but it was a negligible amount for Aileen when she was outside the tower. A chantless teleportation spell that doesn't even need a magic circle. I was shocked when I first learned it too. Amazing. Yan Tsung put on a face of envy. Why don't you enter the tower too? This is a great chance for you. You know why. I'm busy with my guild. Why are you sacrificing yourself for a guild? Don't be stupid. Yan Tsung only smiled bitterly at Aileen's chastising. Anyways, why are you here? Aileen said as she sat down on her office chair. The difference in their height had been bothering her for a while, and Aileen was happy to finally do something about it. Well, I'm here to bribe you. Bribe? There are two kids I'm close with inside the tower. Un is one of the strongest people in the tower, right? Q um. Aileen let out a dry cough and leaned against her chair. I am the strongest, right? Exactly. Aileen's lips trembled. She was indeed weak to compliments. All right, that much shouldn't be hard. One should be Kim Soho. But who's the other one? Yan Tsia hesitated for a moment before carefully opening her mouth. Fenra, Kim Hajin. You know him? Fenra. I do, but I haven't run into him ever. But if you do happen to meet him, treat him well. Help him too if he's having trouble with something. Hearing Yan Tsia's serious tone, Aileen replied confidently. I got it. Trust me. After that, Aileen busily popped up here and there. As expected of someone who liked receiving attention. She threw several media events, lectures, and conferences. She was completely different than Yonga who was quietly resting at home with his wife. In any case, after spending the night on Earth, Aileen returned to the tower. But before she had the chance to even remember Yun Xia's request, she was faced with a shocking piece of news. A player has entered the eighth floor. An unknown player has cursed you. A bounty has been placed on your head. Anyone who defeats you will receive 5000 TP. Three seconds. For three seconds, Aileen stood still in a daze. Then, she rubbed her eyes. The system window still filled with sentences she couldn't comprehend. What bullcrap is this? Aileen spat out a curse. Tower of Wish. 83F Creven Mainland. I returned to the Tower of Wish after a five-day vacation. Although I ended up spending an extra day outside, 
There weren't any dramatic changes inside the tower. It was just the news of me reaching the eighth floor that was heating up the public forum. Underscore. The player on the eighth floor must be Black Lotus, right? Almost certainly. Nah, it might not be him. I heard Black Lotus and Fenra fought each other with the latter coming out on top. What? Fenra? Underscore. What? While I was lightheartedly looking through the public forum, a strange comment caught my attention. The player's ID was Jisupari Oon. She was spreading what she heard from Kim Seho. This girl. Was she in charge of spreading rumors? Well, it wasn't much of a secret anyways, and it was good that more and more people were perceiving Black Lotus and Fenra as different people. You go, Yi Jun. As soon as I said that, Jisupari Oon posted another comment. Yep Fenra is using a gun inside the tower he entered through the black ticket he seemed to have brought a gun with it. He's practically a grand general inside the tower. I exited the public forum and stood in front of the Iron Blood Duchess Mansion. You know me, right? Of course, honored guest Kim Hajin, welcome back. Thank you. After passing by the knights guarding the entrance and walking through a beautiful garden, I entered the mansion's lobby. I first tried to locate boss. And Aoife reacted in response to my thoughts. Aoife algorithm, vision improvement. In an instant, my vision spread out. As my thousand mile eyes began to penetrate through the walls of the mansion, Aoife displayed a clearer view of my target. Player boss found. Vitality, 100 one hundredths. Magic power, 100 one hundredths. Status, reading a book. Predicted future action minus 99% chance to turn the page. It was telling me all sorts of extraneous information. Interesting. I muttered inwardly as I walked up to the library upstairs. Boss. I called her with a smile. Oh. Boss glanced at me momentarily and then nodded. You're late. I ended up staying another day. For some reason, Boss seemed to be hurt. I examined her closely. As I thought, she had bruises under her left eye above her collarbone, and near other parts of her body. Boss, did someone beat you up? Boss snickered. I've been sparring with the Iron Blood Duchess recently. Huh? My jaws dropped. I couldn't understand what she was saying. Was she saying that Toma beat her up? Toma wasn't weak by any means, but she should be a few levels below Boss. Boss, how much of your stats have you recovered? About 50-60%. 50-60%. Boss was only at half of her real strength, but from the looks of it, Toma seemed to have beaten her up easily. It seemed Toma had gotten incredibly strong inside the tower. Keep up the good work. Creven doesn't have a hideout system, but it has bonus stat boosts for sparring. Creven was full of powerful NPCs. Naturally, there were many quests and events involving them. To fully reap the benefits of this floor, personal strength was vital. I plan on focusing on sparring for the next month. The Iron Blood Duchess seems to enjoying sparring me too. Yo. At that moment, a voice calling us rang out. We turned our heads sideways and saw the Iron Blood Duchess, Toma, walking towards us. She grinned. Here, it's what you asked for. I got it ready while you were back on Earth. She trudged up to me and handed over a small crystal. Oh, already? Level 7 location crystal steel. It was a portable crystal steel. By infusing it with magic power, I was able to teleport to the world's end bridge whenever I wanted. With this, I would be able to combat players trying to reach the ninth floor whenever I wanted. You should be able to reach the eastern border with this crystal. It's expensive, so don't lose it. It took 20 or 30 times the money I borrowed from you to make it. 20 30 times meant that this crystal was worth 6 9 billion won. I put the crystal steel away and tapped Toma's shoulders. Thanks. No problem. Also, you can only use it five times, so don't forget that. And here, Toma handed me a box that seemed even more important than the crystal steel. What's this? Half a year ago, monsters began to drop strange pieces of paper. We threw them away at first, but it just seemed too fishy. So we collected them and put them all in this box. Paper. After mulling over it for a bit, a bolt of electricity coursed through my brain. Paper. If I was right. This box had the potential to be the most precious treasure chest in the entire tower. I quickly opened it up, underscore.
Item experience plus 50 coupon X11, item experience plus 70 coupon X4, item experience plus 100 coupon X4, level 2 consolidation coupon, level 4 skill consolidation coupon X3, level 3 skill consolidation coupon X2, skill experience plus 30 coupon X11, skill experience plus 60 coupon X9, underscore. Gold mine. It was an absolute gold mine. When I saw the item description windows, I almost fainted from shock. I can't use these. But I figured you guys could. I was touched by Toma, and my body moved automatically. In the next moment, I found myself hugging Toma. Hey, are you crazy? Thanks, friend. It's hot. Toma easily pushed me away with her strength. It was like she was tossing aside a puppy clinging to her leg. Don't squeeze me if you're going to hug me. Well, you see, I've really been needing these. I still can't believe you have so many. How long were you collecting them for again? Six months. As I was thanking her with heartfelt gratitude, I suddenly felt a sharp gaze on my back. I turned around. Boss was glaring at us with narrowed eyes. Oh, why are you glaring? Toma asked teasingly. Then. What I couldn't understand happened. Boss flinched and looked away. Hume, Duchess, would you like to spar again today? A spar? Sure, I'd be happy to. Follow me. Boss went outside with Toma. The way they left made it look like Boss was inferior to Toma. The Guild Alliance quickly climbed the tower. The news of a player reaching the 8th floor had been the trigger. Exactly 4 days later, they attacked Castle Number 5. This time, even Aileen. Jin Seon, and Yi Yong participated in the battle. The attack was carried out under high tension due to the belief that Black Lotus might show up once again. However, it seemed it really was Black Lotus who reached the 8th floor as he was nowhere to be seen, and the castle attack ended without anything special happening. Just like in the other castle attacks, Rachel made great contributions as an elementalist. As expected. The crystal steel that led to the sixth floor was inside castle number five, as well as the essence of the sun, which Medea wanted. After giving the essence of the sun to Medea and claiming the reward, the group climbed up to the sixth floor. Players needed 100,000 performance points to reach the sixth floor, and most members of the guild alliance had already surpassed that number. 6F, Splendor. Immediately, they were greeted with a beautiful scenic view. Right in front of them was a wooden sign that someone seemed to have hammered into the ground. Use this place to train. Was it some kind of a trap? Such a thought couldn't escape the minds of several Alliance members, and while they were discussing the matter, the administrator arrived to allocate them with time. Some received 6 hours and some received 100, but the average was around 48 hours. The Alliance members bonded. Should they train here, or should they go straight to the seventh floor? Essence of the Strait, English Royal Court, Frost Sanctuary, Desolate Moon. The above four guilds and rankers chose to train, and other guilds and Jin alliances chose to quickly climb up. The ones who arrived on the seventh floor game center were then faced with an unbelievable sight. What? How is this possible? The hell? It's seven poker again. Curses and cries of astonishment rang out throughout the game center. It wasn't surprising. The first place player for most of the virtual reality games was just one person. The alias seven poker claimed the top spot for practically every game. Players suspected that it was the floor's administrator at first but the letter P next to the name signified that it was a player just like them. It looks like Black Lotus wiped this place clean. Fucking hell, how can he be so greedy? Can't we put a bounty on his head somehow? We don't know his nickname, and even if we did, who would dare challenge him? I guess you're right. In any case, a week went by since then, and most players had run out of the time they were given on the sixth floor. After having advanced by several levels, they passed the seventh floor's game center and began to gather in, a 1F, field of trials. We just have to reach the end of this place, currently, on 81F, a warm breeze blew above a vast field. It looks like it, Lady Aileen. Aileen's party, consisting of Jin Seon, Aileen, Yi Yong, and Shin jong -ek, were standing at the starting line. Should we divide the task somehow? Kim so has party, consisting of Kim so -ho, Che Neyun, Yi Yongan, Yi Jun, and the Furman brother and sister, 
suggested, we probably don't need to, just look around and see if there are any jinns nearby, jinns, ah, right, someone put a bounty on Lady Aileen, Jin Seon furrowed her brows when she thought about how someone dared to target Aileen, you be quiet, like I care about some idiot putting a bounty on my A, at that moment, something caught Aileen's attention, a cute squirrel had appeared on the field, although the squirrel was a little larger than usual, as Aileen loved cute things, she didn't suspect a thing and called the squirrel over, come here, little squirrel I'll give you treats, the squirrel stared at Aileen warily, then scurried up to her, after arriving by Aileen's side, the squirrel began to act strangely, it was rubbing its hands on her pocket, ha ha, look, this squirrel is adorable, Aileen only found the squirrel to be cute, she didn't notice what was happening at all, 30 tp, 40 tp, 20 tp, 30 tp, Jine, who was able to transform into an animal now, ran to Aileen as soon as she spotted her from the forest, what are you doing here, are you hungry, are you looking for food, looking at Aileen who was grinning from ear to ear, Jine thought, idiot, a happy smile emerged on Jine's face, look, this squirrel is smiling, it must like me a lot, should I take it in as a pet, completely unaware that she was being robbed in broad daylight, Aileen kneeled and patted the squirrel's head, one, it's an old tradition in Korea to eat tofu when you leave prison, chapter 200, damned long story, 2. The squirrel ran around from player to player for about 5 minutes before disappearing into tall grass. Aileen looked on in disappointment as the squirrel left but soon put on a serious face and looked out to the front. What's the plan? Aileen asked Kim Soho's party. Yan Tsunga had asked her to help out Kim Soho, but she believed he should be able to at least survive the tower's stage without her babysitting him. If you really want. I can cover for, Aileen's stopped in the middle as she turned her head sideways and saw Kim Soha's party, he was riding on a cool vehicle that resembled a snowmobile, it was black and golden on the surface and looked sturdy even at a glance, ah, um, we have a way already, seeing Aileen's shocked expression, Kim Soho scratched his head and explained, looks like he's more prepared than us, Lady Aileen, Kim Soho, What's that? Where did you get it? Jin Seon expressed her surprise sincerely, and Shin Jong Ek asked enviously. Uh, I found it on the second floor. It's fine. Aileen was also envious, but she took out a small kite shield to not lose out. This is enough for us, Aileen said as she snorted. As the spirit speech master, her confidence wasn't unfounded. This shield will become big enough to cover all of us. Her words turned fantasy into reality. The kite shield which was only big enough to cover half of Aileen's body, suddenly enlarged, although its weight didn't change, it had become big enough that Shin Jong Ek had to carry it instead, also, for the next 15 minutes, this shield will block attacks lesser than my total magic power capacity, pf, pfft, Aileen was speaking seriously, but her cute manner of speech and the way her small head bobbed side to side caused Jin Seon to snicker. Jin Seon instinctively moved her hand to Aileen's head but stopped after realizing what would happen if she really did pat her. We're going to go ahead. You guys can follow us after the first wave of attacks. After leaving behind a generous offer, Aileen moved behind the kite shield with Yi Yong. -a. Yes, thank you. All right. Get ready, us four are going to move at the same speed like one body, understood, Aileen's party accepted Aileen's spirit speech without resistance, 3, 2, 1, after Aileen's countdown, they shot forward simultaneously, we should get ready to, Kim Soho spoke as he watched Aileen's group leave, immediately afterwards, Vanessa Furman and Paolo Furman finished their preparation, Che Nayun was the only one who remained quiet, Nayun, are you ready? At that moment, a wave of arrows rained down on Aileen's group. However, they were unable to penetrate Aileen's kite shield. Che Nayun, are you still wondering who Seven Poker is? Yi Yong and nudged Che Nayun who was standing in a daze. Che Nayun snapped out and squeezed her long sword's hilt. Huh? No. I'm just meditating to get to my peak condition, don't lie, you weren't listening at all, I'm not lying, plus, I think I already know who 7 poker is, the mysterious 7 poker had dominated most of the games on the 7th floor's game center, Chae Yun felt like she knew his identity, in truth, 
It wasn't all that surprising, 7 Poker, Extra 7's 7 and his incredible gaming skills. With these clues, it was easy for her to guess who 7 Poker was. What Chain A Yun was pondering about was something else, the true identity of Extra 7. Anyways, I'm ready. Let's go. I'll protect the car properly. As soon as Chain A Yun spoke confidently, as I thought, a cheesy, uncomforting voice rang out next to them. Members of the Guild Alliance were here too. Kim Soha's party turned to the side. Ordinary People Alliance's Zaruan had arrived with his party. Zaruan, nice to meet you, hero Kim Soho. Kim Soho glared at Zaruan with a sharp gaze which Saruan pushed back with a smiling face. Hero? What hero? Next to him, a displeased voice rang out. Although Kim Soha's party only knew him as a loud baldy, he was known by a select few as Kata, the chameleon troops seat of silver. Yi Jun whispered, Who are they? You don't need to know. Kim Soho's reply made Kata frown. She doesn't need to know? Aren't you being a bit rude here? Let's get going. We don't need to trouble ourselves with these guys. Kim Soho put his foot on the accelerator. What? Where are you? Wait. Where did you guys get such a good ride? Kata's snake-like eyes flickered with greed. Qua. Kim Soho stepped on the accelerator. The dwarven supercar shot forward, throwing dirt and pieces of grass on Kata. PFFT. Ah, hey, you little fucker, stop. I said stop. Kata cursed as he yelled, shooting out a silver ray of magic power, but the dwarven supercar had far escaped his range. 3F. Level 4 bells hide out. Jin Siyuk opened her eyes feeling hazy, to be exact. They opened regardless of her will. She couldn't bear the excruciating pain. How? Jin Sayuk let out a cracked and barren sigh and raised her upper body. She then infused magic power into her blackened body. The magic power intertwined with the curse burning her flesh and clotted over the surface of her skin. Jin Sayuk clenched her teeth and removed what was now a thin film. Dash. The severe pain of cutting off flesh followed. But this was the only way she could survive. The least she could do to continue living was to remove the curse that was exposed outward. Jin Sayuk fell to her knees in excruciating pain. Ugh, Sayuk, her comrade rushed in. Are you okay? Jin Sayuk looked at Rumi, the woman looking at her. She wanted to say something, but her lips refused to budge. As she mumbled inaudible words, her eyes wandered to Rumi's hands. In those hands was a bowl of well-cooked rice porridge. Suddenly, Fear struck Jin Sayuk, the curse interfered with eating. So, if she were to swallow that porridge, unbearable pain would strike her once again. Ugh. Jin Sayuk shook her head in fear. You have to eat to get better. No, no. Bels is trying hard to make a counter urgent. No, no. Jin Sayuk stood up in a hurry. She meant to run away but fell only after a few steps. Rumi caught her thin body which was as light as a feather. It's okay. Don't worry. Everything will be alright. Rumi gently soothed her. Jin Sayuk stayed still in her arms. After a short pause, there was a faint sob. It hurts so much. It'll be okay soon. Rumi was heartbroken. Jin Sayuk she knew wasn't weak like this. If her injuries were normal. She would have easily overcome them with the power of her anger. If I die, you're not going to die. Who said you will? Now, you should stop talking. However, she had six different parts of her body covered with the Banshee's curse. These curses, which were already at level 5, gave Jin Sayuk pain greater than death. I nearly a month went by with no cure and no change for the better. To Jin Sayuk, this month felt like a year. Over the course of this month, her strong willpower had melted away. I'm so, so tired. Jin Sayuk sobbed in Rumi's arms. She was almost wailing. It's okay. Rumi clenched her teeth. She wanted to take revenge on the man who made Jin Sayuk this way. However, she had no means of doing so. She didn't have the power to. Above all, that wasn't what Bell wanted. Ha. Huh. With a groan, Jin Sayuk stopped trembling. But her heartbeat was still the same. She had fainted again. Rumi put Jin Sayuk back in bed. Bell returned at that precise moment. Bell said. Bell looked back and forth between Jin Sayuk lying in bed and Rumi, then smiled brightly. I think I'll be able to get my hands on the counter agent. Around the same time, a Tyne Blood Duchess mansion in Crevon. I was able to draw a conclusion after watching Boss and Toma duel. First, Boss was far greater in terms of talent and innate battle sense. But the problem was Toma's stats and use of skills, 
which she had accumulated and perfected over the last four years. Toma, who was originally the owner of Ether, was a genius when it came to utilizing her environment and tools given to her. She overwhelmed Boss with her unrivaled understanding and utilization of skills. UK, Quang, Boss flew to the wall. Toma was using only psychokinesis, a basic skill, to fight Boss. Although psychokinesis was one of the best basic skills, what was really amazing was the synergy between Toma's psychokinesis and magic power. Let's do it one more time. Boss didn't give up. Still, while the process might be a little different, the result would be the same. Boss would need at least three months of repeated sparring to become a match for Toma. I took my eyes off of their duel and checked my inventory. In the inventory, there were many treasures that Toma had bestowed upon me. The mere sight of them made me pleased. But I couldn't continue to simply hold on to them. I took them out without hesitation and tore them apart quickly. You used skill experience plus 30 coupon. You used skill experience plus 60 coupon. You used item experience plus 100 coupon. As a result, synthesis became level 5, extraction and permanent materialization became level 6 and my one and only special skill, algorithm, rose to level 5, upgrading ether with advanced algorithm, skill level 5 achieved, challenge completed, basic understanding of skills, all stats increase by 0.25, finally, at last, the system I had been waiting for was unlocked, you successfully recovered your stats, your body has perfectly adapted to the environment inside the tower, underscore, Strength 8.000 Stamina 7.935 Speed 10.055 Perception 10.355 Vitality 8.005 Magic Power 4.5 Underscore I had fully recovered my power outside the tower. The experiences I gained inside the tower seemed to have been applied as well as my stats were also 1.52 points higher than before. Ayu finally, it was a long wait. The real growth would begin now. Quang. Suddenly, there was an ear-splitting roar, and Boss fell flat on her face. Boss and Toma's second duel had ended. Hey. I called Toma. Toma tilted her head to the side and turned to look at me. What? Spar with me too. Huh? Toma stood silently for a moment and then grinned. PFFT. Why so suddenly? Just because. It made me feel a little uncomfortable seeing you bully Boss. Of course, that was a joke. I was used to Boss clumsy self by now. In fact, I was too scared to deal with Boss when she was being serious. Oh yeah, then come at me. I brushed off my knees and stood up with a grin. However, Boss suddenly intervened. Stop it, Harjin. Boss looked at me with the most serious expression on her face and shook her head. I understand how you feel, but I'm okay. Question mark. Ah, that's right. I forgot that she was the type of person who took jokes seriously. I'm the one who asked her for a spa. Seeing Boss' profound gaze, I nodded. Oh, okay. I then walked over to Toma. There was no need for a warm-up. We counted in silence. One, two, three. First. Toma unleashed her magic power. It gathered in one place and then turned into fragments which soon formed a dome that engulfed both of us. What's the name of this skill? Dome Prison. It's invincible not only against one but also against many. Watch. With a shake of Toma's hand, several fragments of magic power which made up the dome flew at me. Ether responded first to the series of attacks, grabbing the fragments flying towards me, turning them into crystals and putting them in my inventory. Oh, looks like you have a pretty cool skill too. Yup. Then, ha. Huh. Toma rushed at me without forewarning. Her speed was difficult to perceive with the naked eye, but this time my body reacted first. Coo. Toma's fist and my arm came into contact. It was not a movement of the body, but an operation of the machine. Ether had moved my body on its own to block Toma's attack. I stopped. Toma's attack with my right arm. Less than a second had passed at this point. What came to my mind at that moment was a gun. Only if I had a pistol in my left hand. Upon thinking so, a handgun appeared. It wasn't a miracle or imagination. Ether had moved and brought it to me. I aimed at Toma and pulled the trigger. UK. The bullet scratched Toma's cheek. Of course, 
It wasn't a miscalculation on my part. Toma had just dodged at the last moment. To dodge a bullet right under her nose she was also a monster. But I still smiled. If what I had in my hand was a shotgun, I would have one just now. I went easy on you, yet you. Toma's kick landed on my thigh. Exclamation mark. I was horrified. It felt like my leg was about to fall out, even though Ether's automatic defense alleviated the pain as much as possible. Kiik Toma was about to throw me to the ground next when Spartan appeared out of the blue and wailed. What's that? Toma stopped, and I widened my eyes. This was a sign from Spartan. There are people trying to cross the bridge already. I pulled out my hood from my inventory. I come to think of it, 30-ish people came in about a week ago. Right? Yeah? Those guys are allied jinns. Show them who's boss. I heard they've been meddling with the locals. I held the portable crystal steel in one hand. I had already recovered from Toma's kick using their level 4 orb of regeneration. I'll be right back. I'm going now, boss. I infused Sigma's magic power into the crystal steel. The sense of space warping embraced my entire body. World's End Bridge the pathway to the ninth floor. The Evil Society Alliance arrived there after kidnapping and torturing several Creven NPCs. So we have to get past here. Kim Hakpio muttered and folded his arms. World's End Bridge. The name was obviously fit for the bridge. It was so long that one couldn't see where it ended, and it looked as if flesh-eating beasts would jump out any time from the dark forest that stretched from one side of the bridge to the other. Get moving, guys. For this reason, Kim Hakpio sent the others forward first. He himself stood near the middle of the pack, safely surrounded by his subordinates. Don't be scared. Nothing's gonna come out. They walked for about five minutes amidst Kim Hakpio's encouragement. Suddenly, a flash of light came from the other side of the sky. It soon turned into a streak of wind and headed towards them. The thing reflected in Kim Hakpio's glare was an arrow. What? His henchman magician put up a barrier in time. Tong. The arrow couldn't get past the barrier and fell on the ground feebly. It was an ordinary wooden arrow. Its cuteness made him embarrassed for getting scared for a second. Ha! Ha ha ha! What's this? This is supposed to be a trap? Kim Hakpio picked up the arrow and showed it to his subordinates. They laughed along with him. Obviously, the eighth floor was nothing they should be scared of. Ha ha ha! Excuse me, team leader. Salason who was laughing alongside Kim Hakpio, squinted as if he had discovered something. What? Um, there's something dangling at the end of the arrow. Huh? Kim Hakpio looked at the arrow's tail. There was a piece of paper hanging from the lower side of the arrow. What the heck is this? It looks like a message. You should open it. You do it. Kim Hakpio had Salason do the job. He dumped what could be a trap onto his subordinate. Yes. Sir, Salason unfolded the note without hesitation and tilted his head to one side at its content. This is what Kim Hakpia took the note back. The note only had a single sentence. I will allow only ten steps forward. What's this? More than that, please look below. There's a drawing. Kim Hakpia did as Salason said. There was a drawing of a lotus in the bottom right corner of the paper. A lotus. It's drawn with ink. Ink drawing of lotus. In other words, a black lotus. It was clear who the drawing represented. Kim Hakpia thought for a moment, so black lotus was already on the verge of reaching the ninth floor apostrophe. But his thought did not last long and could not change what Kim Hakpia was about to do. Including him, there were twenty members of Evil Society Alliance with him. Up until now, they had stolen various stats boosting items and skills from other players and NPCs. Kim Hakpio was confident that he could win against anyone. Fourth, Amir Oki dares to be so bold. All the praises must have gotten to his head. Pride also played a big part in his decision. To retreat without even making sure the enemy was serious would hurt his pride, and even if he was. Kim Hakpio believed he was far more experienced. Only a handful of people could look down on Kim Hakpio in the entire world. Set up barriers in case of an attack. You know the spell, right? Yes, sir. As expected of an executive of evil society, he didn't gloss over any detail. Let's go. First step, second step, third step. They walked forward in a heavy state of tension. Finally. They reached the tenth step as noted in the message. Black Lotus warning was immediately proven to be true. Key eek, a loud cry of a bird rang out, 
and something black flew in from the corner of the sky. Kim Hak Pyo knew that it was an arrow. As such, he was prepared to face it head on. Barriers. A series of sturdy barriers shot up one after another at Kim Hak Pyo's command. A total of 15 barriers were laid on top of each other. A mere arrow shouldn't be able to get past them all. Salason. You figure out which way that arrow came from. Kim Hak Pyo was leisurely giving out the next command when he realized something had gone wrong. As the arrow drew closer, his instincts were roaring louder. Like a meteor, a trace of destruction split the dry atmosphere in half. A torrent of magic power caused the air to burn. An arrow descended downward, tearing clouds apart. His thoughts didn't last long as a streak of light fell down, 